And now, the starting lineup of your favorite show. And producer, 5'11", from Blanchester. The Cow Killer, Casey McCollister. And comic engineer, standing at 4'8", the pride of the West Side. Elliot Rearing. Now, I told you earlier in the week that we don't count the days around here. Not worried about what day it is, but today is Friday. Now, Fridays, they hit a little bit different, right? We all know that. Some of you are fired up that it's Friday. Some of you may not be, but most of the majority of this country is absolutely pleased that it's Friday. And not only is it Friday, but the sun is shining. And when the sun is shining, I am just in, in so much of a better mood that it's, that it's absurd. That is until I open up x.com this is off the bench presented by united dairy farmers we have a lot to talk about today we have as always casey mccallister and uh elliot rearing also known as uh, the zebra from time to time but you get on x.com and it just it's just uh it's like uh, it's like opening up the door when you're going to a funeral you know it's just you it hit you and you're just like what are we doing here so you know you get online you realize we're arguing about and we'll see which side of the aisle some of us fall on in here. We'll see what you think. Uh, as always, you can call in 888-513-CBOX. That's 888-513-CBOX. Feel free to call in if you have something of, of relevancy to talk about, which most of you do. Our chat's very, very knowledgeable. Uh, we have the NCAA 25. There's some news and notes about that that I want to talk about and some more or less interesting things that come with that and where that might lead and what it might mean to all of us. Uh, we then have the jerseys, mm. the MLB jerseys. And uh, we'll talk about that at the very end of the show. We, all, we also have something coming up right around the 11 o'clock hour. I don't know if we're good enough to time it up to where it'll be at 11 o'clock. We'll see. More times than not, we're not that good at it. So we'll see if it comes around the 11 o'clock hour. But that's about when we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have that discussion. Um, but most importantly... We have things that happened around the world of sports yesterday. Yeah. So, so what a time to be alive. Uh, a lot of sports going on. The NBA came back. A lot back. of sports going on. The, the NBA came back. Trace, yes, how much NBA did you watch yesterday? None. I, here's a little fun nugget. I bet on the Cavs minus eight and a half. Yes. First game off the All-Star break. They're playing the Magic. Right. Hour before tip-off, best oh. players injured. All that Dang. means nothing. Who's best, best players injured? Donovan Mitchell. Okay. Donovan Mitchell the didn't Cavs. want to play. Dang. So Cavs. that spread drops from eight and a half to five, and I'm on the losing mm. side. We don't have a player. Yeah, they didn't even win. Th thanks for betting on the NBA, everybody. Um, uh, so other than that, Tim Anderson, he has signed with the Miami Marlins. Nice. Tim Anderson's claim to fame is always going to be, do you know? I mean, I'm sure I know. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. The home run and the corn. Yeah, 100. percent I mean, without question, anybody brings up Tim Anderson's career to the vast majority of people that watch Major League Baseball, I think that that's the first thing that's going to pop up uh, in most people's minds. The corn ball. Are the, we bringing the back corn, the corn the, game this the year? The corn ball. I don't know if the corn games are coming back. I thought that was an awesome thing. In fact, I will say the thing that I found most impressive about uh, we're calling it the corn games. For those that don't know, what we're talking about we're essentially talking about the Field of Dreams field where. They go and they MLB has one game there where they play and the Reds were um, a part of that inaugural game or not the inaugural game they were a part of the second game so last year we got to uh, two years ago I should say we got to enjoy that um, you know in a, in, in maybe the world's worst baseball season the Reds at least got to play in that and uh, Chucky Robinson got to get in that bat yeah. in, uh, at the Field of Dreams. Papierski so played that one too. Um, say it again. Papierski, remember Papierski? No, I don't remember him. Well, he played in that one. That was a fun, that was a fun game. It's, it's a shame that our, our corn game was wasted on the world's worst roster. But yeah, Tim Anderson, I think that was a that was a. But yeah, he hits the walk off home run in the Field of Dreams, the very first inaugural game against the Yankees, and the fireworks shoot off behind the scoreboard, and it just seemed majestic. The one thing I wanted to add about that before we move on is uh, I. I am super impressed by how great Fox covered those games. Yeah. The graphics, all of the cinematic shots that they would have. I mean, it was, it was excellent. So shout out to Fox for that. 
Um, I hope they bring it back. I, I, I really do. I, I'm going to get on Rob Manfred's case again today, but that is the one thing he has 100% nailed is the corn game. So thank you, Rob. Uh, he, Tim Anderson signed with the Miami Marlins. Now the former or the now former red Vladimir Gutierrez, he has also signed with the Miami Marlins. Uh, this is a non roster invite to major league camp, minor league deal. Uh, but farewell, Vladimir, uh, you sweet prince. He finished uh, third in rookie of the year that one time. Yeah, I think it was third. I, I or he maybe got a vote. I don't know. E- either way, thank you very much, Vladimir. Another former red, Derek Law, he yeah. signed with the Washington Nationals. This is, I think, the third former red to be on the Nationals this year. Kind of like that Mariners team from a couple years back, uh, except it's much uh, worse players, but each to each their own. Nationals, good luck to you. Derek Law is real good. The Tigers, they signed Gio Urshela to a one-year deal. You a big fan of Gio? Um, I can't say that I'm yeah, a nobody fan really nor, is, nor. Nobody really is either. The Yankees <laughs> surely weren't. Uh, Hyunjin Ryu is heading back to the KBO. He was the uh, Toronto Blue Jays pitcher for yeah. the past couple of years. Shout out KBO and COVID. That was an entertaining couple weeks of baseball we got to Fun watch. fact, that's the very first thing I bet on legally was the KBO. Nice. That, that, that makes a lot of sense for you. So I, and and I, I'll tell you what, I was a KBO sharp. Uh, the, the, the NC Dinos, I believe was the team's name. I bought a sweatshirt, bought a merch. Mm, um, nice. But anyway, Hinjin Ryu is heading back to the KBO. Eight-year deal with the Hanwha Eagles. Good luck to him. And college basketball, number 21, Washington State. They upset Arizona, the number four team in the nation, 77-74. I was watching this game. Washington State was down three with about 20 seconds left. Yes. They hit the game-tying three, was fouled on the shot to take the one-point lead. Brutal by our boys at Arizona. Was that a uh, – you said you were watching it. Was it one of those situations where they purposely fouled? They were they were trying no, 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 to make was, a purpose foul, or they were just trying to contest the shot? Just contesting the foul. shot and ran into them. Terrible. So that was a terrible decision all the way around. Terrible That's sh- the thing I always worry about when you decide to yeah. foul – uh, you know, most coaches say they want to foul underneath the seven second mark. It's like at some point, these heady players will realize their statistical chances of hitting a three. Um, well, not hitting a three, but shooting a free throw, making the free throw, then tipping in the tipping in the miss, the automatic miss. That is the chances of that are significantly lower than just waiting until they go to foul you and then just heaving one up there and hoping they call the three-point foul. Yeah. I'm waiting for that to come. It doesn't seem like that's gotten there yet, but it's like the whole ent- the whole entire purpose of this play is we're betting on the fact that they're going to foul. Let's wait for them to go for the foul, and then let's just shoot a jump shot. If it turns out they don't foul you, then we're in, we, we were already in trouble. Do you know what play I'm absolutely sick and tired of seeing? It's when a team is down by three or two. Instead of taking like a medium pass, you take it to half court, you take your chances with a half court shot, which in really today's college basketball landscape is not that big of a deal. You, you, you pull Still one a tough shot, but you're shot. saying it's not as crazy as it once was. But I, 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 correct. Shout out Steph Curry. Correct. I think if, you, if, you are going, if you're going to draw up the Hail Mary Christian Leitner play, you're an idiot. I think that play works 0.0% of the time. When, you're, when there's three seconds left, why not take a half-court for sure shot opposed to the chuck it down the court, have the other team catch it in the air, and then the game's just over. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of that play. You don't like uh, the play where West throws the ball down the court and they call a timeout immediately? That one seems okay. That one's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. If okay. you're going to call a timeout at midcourt, that's great. If you're going to throw it down there with the, with, the, with the hopes of shooting a ball, you're an idiot, and you're a fool, respectfully. Uh, Washington State has won eight consecutive games. They're a bona fide tournament mm. team. All right. Uh, Minnesota, they beat Ohio State. They are now 23-3 and against the spread this season after winning last night 78-71. to does that, make, does that make Diebler's time at Ohio State? Is he is he not a part of the conversation for the next head coach now? No, he still beat Purdue. He still has the best win on the year. So you think that Purdue holds weight over that loss? Correct. Hmm. Interesting. So, so I, I, I think that guy's in the Diebler. What's his name? The Diebler. Diebler. Yeah. Uh, Purdue. They Brother smacked John. around Rutgers last night, ninety six sixty eight. Every time Purdue loses, they usually bounce back with a with a fury. Um, and this is now we're getting to some Cincinnati sports. Everybody's like, "Oh, you talk about Cincinnati, right?" FC Cincinnati, Trace. They yes. played a game last night. Yes, they did. This was in one of their seven regular season tournaments they play. Okay. They beat the Cleveland Cavaliers. I thought this was interesting. They beat the Cleveland Cavaliers 2-0 yesterday. Yes. And it was a hell of a game, hell of a match. And this is the highlight to top it off. It was actually brought to my attention by Casey's wife, Alex. So this is this was the highlight of the game. They played the game. 
All right. Let's take a look. Okay. We got a free kick from... Oh. oh. What happened? Let's, let's can we replay it. Let's replay what, it. What happened? Well, this is the what play am that, I looking at? The, the, the line? This is... Oh, let's see. And then he... Oh. What Whoops. happened? Well, it looks like the FC Cincinnati player got within about five feet of the uh, Cleveland Cavalier guy. Oh, and then the Cleveland Cavalier him. guy grabbed his knee and flopped backwards seven yards. <laughs> so I believe that's what happened on that specific play. Uh, but but what, a, what a hell of a match. Uh, 2 nothing against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Looked like a packed arena. Show it one more time. Let me see the front row of that the stadium real quick. It looked like a packed house. Just real quick. Just real quick. So we got a, we got a packed house. In a, in a February battle against the Cleveland Cavs. Well, you know, when you're without Donovan Mitchell, it's kind of hard to, to put true. up any That's sort true. of uh, offense there for the, the Cavaliers. True. So kudos to the FC. They, uh, they look pretty good. They took care of business like they should have. Yeah, uh, against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So shout out to them. They did real good. Uh, and we move on. Who, was the play- Who would you say was the player of the match last night? Mm, I, I, I don't know if I could give one out. Yeah. That's about right. They all played great. Yeah, they all played real good. Uh, I, I, I'm going to give mine out to the guy who flopped 15 yards backwards for a guy breathing on him. Uh, okay, the Dodgers, they gave everyone a taste of uh, what's going to ha- happen this upcoming season. They dropped eight runs, Trace, yep. in the top of the first against the Padres in the very first spring training game of the MLB season. I take nothing away from that. I am not going to sit here and, and, and worry about how the Dodgers scored eight runs in a spring training game. I don't. I really could care less. Are, are you, do you actually take any kind of uh, any kind of no but, something from that? No, but I, I find it. I do find it a little bit funny uh, okay. that it's just going to be. They will win 125 games this year, and they are going to lose in the NLDS. Um, all right. Outside of that, spring training starts today for six other major league teams, including Reed Mouse's Cubbies. Cubbies take on the White Sox around 3 o'clock today. Will you be cheering on the White Sox? You know, I was thinking to myself um, today, wow, the Cubs play today. I, I, I'm so excited. I didn't know that they played today. I'm, yeah. just, I'm, I'm curious as to when they're going to finally sign Cody Bellinger. It seems as if Scott Boris at this point with all four of his, his big free agents, none of them have signed. Um, it seems as if the teams are starting to dig their heels in a little bit here. They're not negotiating against themselves anymore. They've kind of gotten a little bit wise to Scott Boris's tricks, and uh, they're holding pat. Yeah. The question is, is that, you know, not to turn this into Reds talk here, because I think we have some other things to get into, but the question becomes is, as these guys start sliding, 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 who blinks first? That's going to be interesting. Will Scott Boris finally give in and come down to the level in which the uh, the owners – have asked for the general managers, whoever you, whoever it is that you think is actually making the ultimate decision, and or will it be the same situation where they don't play? Hell, maybe they don't even play on opening day. I don't know how long this bleeds out, but at some point the the, the team gives in, they pay the player, and it all works itself out. Like I said before, it's gone both ways. It's gone both ways. Uh, Le'Veon Bell is probably a perfect example of it going the absolute worst way it possibly could go for a. Um, a specific player, and then I would suggest that the Chiefs and uh, Chris Jones was a pretty good example of the player getting what they want. Yeah. So who knows which way it's ultimately going to go. Um, yeah, I, I don't really take a whole lot away from spring training, though, for the most part. Outside of injury, outside of maybe somebody getting red hot, like extremely, extremely playing a, a, above and beyond what you thought they were capable of, I did take away last year that, that Christian Carnacion Strand and Matt McLean both look like they were maybe the better players, if not the best players in camp last year. So that got me excited. I'm not going to say that spring training doesn't do anything. No. That would be completely false. I don't take anything away from the actual scores is what I'm getting at. No, 100%. Yeah, the scores don't matter. In fact, if you, I think if you tie the game, or I think they reach a time limit at some point, the scores are, are, are nonsense. But I did think I have this I, – I forgot to mention this in the Padres-Dodgers game. Yeah. It is fun to see – like, if you watch one of these spring training games, and we'll get into the fact that the Reds don't have a ton of those to be uh, available to us. But if you watch them, you can see just a 1,000 people in, in the dugout. And this is hilarious. So if you look, they're gonna, the camera's going to shoot over to the Padres, and nice. it's just every player that's ever played on the Padres is in that dugout. Hey, top, they're, they're, they're top step and engaged. That's, that's the rule. That was the rule. Hey. When we play, it was top step and engaged. You got to be hanging <laughs> over the rail. You better be paying attention, which I, I thought was kind of stupid, to be honest. Like, 
at the end of it all, you're just your goal is to go out there and play as well as you can. If you need to sit down and relax and, and, and not, you know, be engaged in every single pitch, then so be it. Now, clearly over the course of a 162 game season, more times than not, eventually what I suggest as being what should be the case all the time ends up happening because not everybody is on the top step and, and, and engaged in every single pitch. That's more of a college thing. But certainly, the very first game of spring training, everybody's locked and loaded. They're ready to go. Opening day is another one of those. Playoffs or towards the end of the season, another one of those. Ninth innings of close games. That's what you see. Mm-hmm. This was arguably the sh- most shocking news I read yesterday. The Lions, the Detroit Lions, the Analytic Kings, they have decided to re-sign Michael Badgley to a one-year deal. A guy that they couldn't trust to make a 40-yarder in the postseason with their season well, on the line. That's what they said. That, they, I don't know. See, that, that was the scapegoat answer for the folks that wanted to say that it was the right decision and you can't guarantee that the guy was going to make a kick or not make a kick. Remember? Yeah, I don't know if the I don't know if the Lions actually believed he wasn't going to make the kick as so much as it was, hey, we are going for it because we we want to be aggressive, and that's the argument is that really should you be aggressive in that spot? Well, the answer was no because if you watch the Super Bowl, each team making what was it four field goals? It was it's preposterous. Yeah. Analytics are great. Analytics work. It's 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 a one hundred percent proven fact. However, when your season's on the line. I do believe you have to trust, at least in, this, in that situation, the guy who is, whose sole job is to come out there and make a 45-yard field goal. And if you can't trust him to do that, why is he on the roster? That's what I really do think it came down to. I think, sure, some of it was Dan Campbell uh, being aggressive all season. Again, I hate to bring this up every single time I mention Dan Campbell, but he went for two on his own 10-yard line. That's, that's how crazy that guy is. Michael Badgley was seemingly a guy they didn't trust. They have brought him back. So I don't know what his job will be to kick extra points again, I guess, unless they go for two every time because he's not going to go out there and kick field goals because uh, they, they, didn't, they purposely and tentfully did not kick two field goals inside of 45 yards to extend and per- perhaps play in the Super Bowl. Some might say win. Preposterous. Absolutely <laughs> nonsensical move. But, hey, welcome him back. A guy you didn't trust to make a kick, sure. Have him back for one more year. Uh, the Chiefs have signed the punt god, Matt Ariza. Ariza? Ariza? I forget. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is the Chiefs. I'm going with Ariza. Matt Ariza. It's Ariza. And this is significant. Obviously, we know the drama surrounding him. But we, when we live in this country and it's guilty till proven innocent, he That's was right. a victim. Clearly, I, it, 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 it comes down to whether – here's the thing about all this. You can talk about – these situations <clears throat> all you want and what ultimately will end up happening is if somebody's going to point to you and say well just because the legal system didn't didn't justify of of whether or not he was guilty or innocent and they said that obviously they didn't have you know he, they didn't have the right evidence to prove it but you know OJ you know OJ's innocent too that's the argument that you will get from some one side of the aisle and to be fair there's some merit to that however what, it, what at what point this is what I where I keep coming back to this at what point do you draw the line in the sand and say, okay, this person went through a legal, a, a basically a legal situation, came out on the other side of it, hit, and he's allowed to do whatever he wants in this country freely because that's what our court system decided. If he's talented enough to be a part of helping your franchise do what your sole goal for the most part is to do, which is win championships, then why wouldn't you take that? And you know who did it? The team that's had the most success in the NFL of recent, and that is the Kansas City Chiefs. The reality is, do you think that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to lose ticket sales now because they took a chance on a guy that might have a little bit of a sketchy past? Do you think that anybody even cares? What's going to end up happening is this, this guy's going to kick an 85-yard punt down the field one time, the very first couple games that he kicks in, and every single team that's going to be asking themselves, why in the hell didn't we do that? And you know who's next? If, it, if, it's, if it's humanly possible that this country can start to move on a little bit about holding everything to this crazy standard of what you should or shouldn't be 
and not just letting the legal system maybe pick your battles? I don't know. That seems to be the best case way of trying to decide whether you should do something or you shouldn't do something is to let the court system decide what it is that they are guilty of or not guilty of. And at some point, and I know that I, you know, here's the thing. I'm not even like a stand for Trevor Bauer. I'm really not. I don't know if I like the guy, hate the guy, I could care less. I'm indifferent about the guy. But the more and more I see what's happening, the more and more I become like a stand for a guy that I think is being essentially blackballed at this point. Can we all agree that Trevor Bauer is 100% being blackballed? If we don't think for a second that if he had the same talent level, and we all know this, this is why it sounds stupid, but I want to I wanna penetrate this, this, this concept. If somebody with the same skill set, the same track record, the same history of Trevor Bauer was open, free agent on the open market, and openly said that they were willing to play with league minimum, at league minimum, with some incentives to prove that they could still do it, they would have been signed within the first 20 minutes of making that statement. But now, there they sit. And what's going to ultimately happen is, possibly, somebody's going to take that chance and it'll be old news within three weeks, in my opinion. It'll, it will be gone with the wind. The same way that this situation happened for the Chiefs, nobody's going to give a damn what happened in the past with their punter if, if, again, there's nothing else that happens, to be clear. Certainly, if something else were to happen, then yes, they're going to be like, well, that's why you shouldn't have signed him. The other thing, to be honest, I'm going to put my – I'll say it. If you don't want to if, if say it in our country, the other thing that I would be deathly afraid of if I was Ariza is just the fact that you have that stereotype or you have that stigma around you of what you've been accused of in the past – and not to think that the, for one second that there's not another person in the world that might not try to use that to their advantage and blackmail you and, and, and basically blackball you into a situation. Now, I, that sucks to have to live your life like that. But if I was him, I, 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 don't, I mean, it's impossible to do, but I'd like to have cameras on me at, at all times. I would be trying to go out of my way because at this point, he's still a target. The same way Trevor Bauer will always be a target. I will say those two things are not exactly the same, I, I, I'd, I'd argue. I think Trevor Bauer has proven uh, – there are proven instances where he cannot get along with teammates. I think he is a little bit of a head case. Matt Ariza was uh, accused of a crime in which he wasn't present at the alleged crime. I believe that is the story. So I, they found that he wasn't even there when the crime occurred. Uh, that is far different than what's going on with Trevor Bauer. I'm not saying Trevor Bauer isn't being blackballed by the MLB, which he most certainly is, uh, but those two situations are vastly different uh, in terms of the human being. This is, this is a quote from the agency that uh, Matt Ariza has signed with. Matt has been to hell and back in the last 18 months. He has handled himself with grace and humility. This is truly inspiring. Matt can now move forward knowing that this ordeal is behind him. He is thrilled to move forward as a part of Chiefs Kingdom. And I'll tell you this. As a guy who sat through about, I don't know, seeming, seemingly 100 Brad Robbins punts last season, I can't believe the Bengals didn't go out and at least have a talk with this guy. They might have, uh, but they're too scared to, to, to pull the trigger. That's, a, that's 100% what it is. If you don't think for a second that, that, that the vast majority of general managers in the league weren't thinking to themselves like, man, we should probably do this. Let's go. Let's go. Let, they're either too cowardly to go ask the owner to do it, or the owner's too cowardly to stand up to the, to the backbone of society and say, no, we're signing this guy because he's, he's a free man. He's been cleared by our justice system, and he's going to kick the football for our team because we want him to win. Yep. And, and, and until, until ownerships – and you know the crazy thing is, like, I don't understand why owners would even be scared to go get Trevor Bauer. I really don't. The guy, the, 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 what, are they going to lose ticket sales? I, I really think it's a clubhouse thing. That's where that, Really? I, like – the there clubhouse are, thing is the most overblown thing I don't that think I so. believe. I don't think so. You don't think so? It's, it's, it's been the only thing that's been reported to be 100% true, that there have been guys that have played with him that do not like him. What about the fact like that more Mookie, than, Betts, Mookie Betts, in, the only reason that Mookie Betts came out and defended him was because Mookie Betts knows that he can do whatever the hell he wants because he's Mookie Betts, he signed for a lot of money, and they can't do nothing to him. Do you think for a second 
that the guy that's that's a fringe player? Do you think Stuart Fairchild is going to come out to the media and be like, you know what? Yeah, I like Trevor Bauer when he was with us. He was a good he was a good teammate to me. I liked him. No, they're not going to do that because they're 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 worried about the same thing that all these other people are worried about. They don't have a backbone to stand on. And to be fair, I'm not suggesting that fringe major league players should go out of their way to try to defend major, uh, Trevor Bauer to the public because. Of because they have nothing to gain from it for the most part outside of getting ridiculed for it and then all of a sudden they become a distraction and then they're on the hot seat and then they get cut because why they're trying to defend Trevor Bauer I get why they wouldn't do it but to sit here and act like that isn't mostly the reason as to why people would come out and defend him or not defend him then why if he was such a bad clubhouse guy let me ask you this then why then why did the the, the Reds trade for him to get him then why did the Dodgers sign him for a billion dollars why because did he, I, why because I think you can put up with a head case in the club clubhouse if there's no other distractions I and I think there is a dist- whether or not it's right or wrong there's certainly a distraction when it comes to Trevor Bauer you can put up with a guy who's who's not uh, team friendly and I'm not saying all these guys have to be best friends it's it's a job you're not friends with everybody who, who you who you work with uh, you have to be you know pleasant you have to be uh, personable a little bit but you don't have to be friends with them and I and you don't have to go out and defend Trevor Bauer if you're a player I I, I don't think so I think if, if, if all this stuff, all this loud noise that's surrounding him, you don't have to go out there and say, this is the best guy I've ever known. I, I, again, this is a job. This, this is a profession to people. Not, you, it was clear when Anthony Rendon came out this week and said it is nothing more than a job. Some, some baseball players firmly believe that. Sports are like that. It's a job for people. Trevor Bauer, again, when you trade for a guy who's a known head case who will take a ball from the, from the manager and whip it across the center field fence – you can put up with it because you know, A, he's good, and B, the distractions are minimal. When the distractions are a lot and there's a lot of noise, it's difficult to bring a guy who, A, nobody wants in the clubhouse, and B, the fans also don't want in there, or at least half the fan base, uh, for, for whatever reasons. I'm not saying those reasons are right or wrong. I'm just saying that that's what's the reason. That's, that's why teams aren't taking the chance on him now. All right. Well... I didn't know that Major League Baseball was filled with a bunch of choir boys. It's uh, it's interesting to me that uh, Marcelo Zuna, he gets he gets that's, a pass. Well, that's horrible. He gets a pass. I, that's he horrible. He gets a pass. No one wants to talk about him. It, it's a double standard. Let's I, just call it what that's it is. Fair. That's Let's fair. call it what it is. It's a double standard. If we want to, I'm, I'm not even here to suggest. And like this is where it turns into Trace is sitting here arguing tooth and nail. I don't know Trevor Bauer. Again, <clears throat> all I'm doing is using what is available to me about what happened. You're Clearly, winning. he got blackballed a little bit here. Clearly, maybe all the things that were said about him before the fact weren't true. But if you want to use that, and you want to run with that, and you want to use that as your headliner as to why you think that he can't do something on a baseball field to help your franchise win, by all means. If you think he's going to be a distraction, cool. I don't think, I don't think like I said, I don't believe. And the other thing, too, that's, that's hilarious to me, is that we live in a society now that people just can't change. You know, Mike Tyson's the same guy now at 60, 65 years old. Are you telling me Mike Tyson now is the same guy at 65 years old that he was when he was 30? I, I guess people you're, can't change. I guess situations that happen to you in life can't possibly reset your concepts of what maybe you used to do versus what you would do moving forward. The fact that Ozuna's in the league is a, is a joke. And, the, and, and honestly, that's, that's terrible. Because I'm pretty sure what he did was on tape. I think the, the police recorded him doing it. Uh, Aroldis Chapman's another guy. I'd argue that maybe probably shouldn't be in the league for what he did. Uh, and so, yeah, there certainly is a double standard. You are 100% right about that. Uh, uh, lastly, uh, Alex in the chat says, is Bauer the new Tebow? Tebow, was, Tebow wasn't very good at his, at, at, his, at, his, at his position. Yeah, he wasn't bad. He was, he was bad. He was bad. I mean, we're talking about a guy that won a Cy Young. We're talking about a guy that genuinely was at the top of his craft. Now, whether he's still there, I don't know. But while teams run out and keep signing, you know, quite frankly, over-the-road players, you like to think that you'd – let's just face it. If it wasn't for the whole entire situation, he'd have been signed. We all know that. It comes down to how do you want to deal with the situation. And you know what? Hey, if, if Major League Baseball wants to sit here and suggest to me that they have super high morals, I'm not against having high morals. I'm all for that. You think for a second that I'm defending exactly what was accused of Trevor Bauer of him doing – I'm not. What I am defending, or what I am trying to suggest, is that at some point, we either trust the justice system that our country has, 
and we use that or we don't. And clearly, we pick and choose now. That seems to be what we're doing. Because if you think that Ozuna and, to his point, Chapman, both of those guys aren't even talked about anymore. Last year at the trade deadline, oddly enough, the same people that told me that they don't want Trevor Bauer under any circumstances, they were cool with it. They were cool with getting Chapman. Perfectly fine with it. Why? Because there's water under the bridge. They forget about it. Because at the end of the day, let's face it, uh, the truth is, is that none of us really know what happened. No one. So if you want to stand on your hill and die on it and sit here and suggest that, you're, that you have super high moral standards, good. Then keep that same energy for every other single player in Major League Baseball. And if your favorite player ends up doing something, I want you to keep the same energy. That's all. All right. Um, and I get it. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's the clubhouse thing. But I'm so tired of hearing people say, well, no one's coming out and defending him. They're not going to defend him. It's the, we, we live in the same exact thing here. Do you see how many people come on Tom's show and do interviews with him? A lot. A lot of people behind the scenes have nice things to say about Tom in regards to having a professional relationship with him. But you know what I haven't heard? I've not heard Joe Buck decide he's going to go into Fox and say, if you don't bring Tom back, well, we're going to have a problem. Why would he do that? It's obvious. It's the same type of situation on a much different scale. All right. Uh, speaking of a situation of whether or not you decide you want to bring somebody back or let him stay or get him going or uh, is he worth it or not worth it? Is his leadership big enough of a factor to keep him around? Joe Mixon, front and center, number one topic of conversation again on Bengals Twitter. And the question of the, uh, of, of the end of it all is there's two sides to this tale. It seems to be, if you had to guess, what's the percentage breakdown between Bengal fandom, in your opinion, would be let's keep Joe Mixon, cut him. I would say that there's about 25% of the people that want to keep him, about 75 that want to cut him. That would be my, my get, guesstimation. All right, so here's what we'll do. Uh, we have a poll question of the day. Uh, today's question is going to be relatively simple. It's going to be a uh, cut Joe, keep Joe. Okay. Question is, is what would you do? I'm on the side of keeping Joe. I don't understand why... The, you have to look at the roster and, and, and say the running backs aren't as important as anybody else. I know Reed makes that take. I know probably a lot of NFL GMs and, and owners certainly believe it. It happened last year during the offseason. Will Saquon get a contract? Will Jonathan Taylor get a contract? I, I, get, I get the stigma sur surrounding it. And you can certainly look at the examples last year like Kyron Williams and the Rams. You can use it like Isaiah Pacheco and the Chiefs. There are certainly that example where you can go out, draft a guy, have him produce equivalent or even better uh, numbers than your current veteran running back. My thing is Joe Mixon isn't a top 10 paid running back in this league. I think he's paid 12th. He's the 12th highest paid running back in, in the NFL. A guy who's gotten almost 1,000 yards in seemingly every season he's played in. Uh, he ranks top 10 over the past five seasons. Again, I kind of mentioned this yesterday. We did a reaction to this. But he ranks top 10 in receiving yards for a running back over the past five years. He's top 10 in rushing yards for a running back over the past five years. And if you want to sit here and say $11 million isn't worth it for a bona fide guy that contributes at a high level, I don't know what we're doing. Because we're, we're going to sit here and, and we're going to not – we're going to do the same thing with T. Higgins where T. Higgins might not be worth $25 million. Well, Let's break this down really quickly. But let me ask you let – me, let me tell you this. Joe Mixon's very rarely hurt. I think he's proven to play at least in most of the games that he plays. So, so is T. I, I know that. Not but I'm saying Joe year. Mixon's produced at a high level every single season. And that's, by the way, dealing with one of the league's worst offensive lines. So you have to ask yourself a question. Will Joe Mixon be better than the guy you draft behind a line that everybody thinks is terrible? Because that's what I would ask. And I think Joe Mixon can do it. Chase Brown proved he could do it at some capacity last year. So maybe you roll with him.
But I would say that I would take the for sure thing. If I have to pay this guy ten million dollars, I pay him ten million dollars. The question I have, or let's break this down to a certain extent for the for those that maybe not are as privy to understanding the situation. Uh, the date I believe is March eighteenth. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, Casey. But the the, the date, let's just call it mid March, in which they would need to cut Joe by to be able to save um, a. a, a, a a more of a uh, of a cap hit, if you want to call it that, yeah. than they would if they let it go beyond that. Many people are going to discuss they they should they should restructure. The question I have is if they do cut him, they save what, Casey? So if they cut Joe Mixon, they save about five point eight million dollars. They are left with a two point seven five million dollar dead cap hit. So if you cut him, he walks away with two point seven five million but you have 5.8 to play with. Okay. And here's the question that I have. And I am not suggesting for a single second that there's really a right or wrong answer when it comes to this decision. I think that you could make the case for both, and they both have some, some merit, to be quite frank. But when you look back at last season, I was in the camp, or I, I was one of the ones that was thinking to themselves last year, that cutting Joe Mixon wouldn't be a bad bad idea. That was because there's this thing called the cap, and it's very valuable to have money to spend within the cap. Therefore, you can go out and try to make your team better. The problem that I have is that they didn't spend up to the cap, even though you're, and I don't know what you want to call them, general manager, I guess is the term that we would use, player director of player personnel, Duke Tobin, said directly into a microphone that we are going to spend up to the cap. They didn't spend up to the cap. So when you sit here and you talk about the cap and you talk about how much money is in the cap, then now you have to ask yourself, well, what are you saving it for? And the easy answer and the cop-out answer, and maybe it's not a cop-out if it's true, but my point is that the easy answer is to say, well, you want to save some money to extend somebody. That's where you're ultimately going to utilize this cap space that you're not going to spend. Well, that didn't happen. Now you're in another year where what do you do with T. Higgins? Clearly, it seems that this franchise is going to tag him. Okay. But if they're not going to extend T. Higgins or if they're not going to extend and it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to because Jamar Chase probably isn't interested in extending himself until they figure out what the Justin Jeffersons of the world are going to do, rightfully so by Jamar Chase, you don't have anything to extend there. So if you're not going to spend up to the cap, then what are you saving money for in the first place? The second question, or not question, but the second statement I would say is if for a guy that was on the idea of cutting Joe the last time, I got to be honest. When you watched this team last year, Joe Mixon was one of the very few bright spots, consistent bright spots on this team. We want to, and again, we'll go down the list of names. Sam Hubbard, out for a specific amount of time. Irv Smith Jr. was a guy that came in. We spent some money on him. I'm sure glad we saved some of the cap space for him. Joe Burrow obviously got extended. That's great. But again, he was hurt. If you're standing around and you're looking and asking yourself, T. Higgins, out for some time last year. Tyler Boyd didn't have the season that everybody wanted him to have. But all I'm getting at was that Joe Mixon performed. And it seems crazy to me that right after the season of a disappointing one, one of the very few bright spots that there was on this team is automatically now worthless. Because that's the way that some fans decide they want to treat certain positions. And I understand the concept that running back is a dime or a dozen. You're running, you can get anybody. You can get anything. Well, I don't know if I wholeheartedly believe in that. It seems to me that if that was the case, then why, then, why, then why even draft a running back at all? Just pick him up out of free agency. Don't spend any money. Keep league minimum at that position at all times. So you're already admitting at some point that they're worth something. There's some value there. Now there's a debate of how much value there actually is. You can't on one hand tell me that it doesn't matter at all but sit there and suggest that you can go draft his replacement or you can just insert a guy that you drafted last year into the starting role immediately and think it's all going to work out when you have a guy that's been here for a very long time, knows the system, and he's familiar with the guys around him, 
And I don't know, maybe you can convince me that there's a new system in place now, but Zach Taylor's still here. I mean, maybe. If you're going to convince me that the offense is going to change significantly and it doesn't matter who's back there, anybody can come in and figure the system out, that might be true. I'm not going to die on that hill. But I also am going to say, let's be careful what you wish for here. Because this is the same thing I heard last year about the tight end position, specifically. I was told, I ain't no big deal. We got Joe Burrow. He could throw to anybody. It doesn't matter. I know Irv Smith Jr. was hurt, but you know what? He'll be good here. He was worthless. Now, yeah, maybe you're going to convince me. Hudson was a great player, ended up being a pretty good player. That's the same thing that will happen at the running back position. But ultimately, the question I have is, what are you saving the money for? Can someone answer that question? If you want to call in and tell me what they're going to save the money for and who they're going to spend it on or what they're going to spend it on, then I'm open. I just have not heard. Every time I hear this debate, you have good berries and you have the, those people are very smart people with this, way smarter than me. But it's all about saving money. And I guess my question, Casey, is can you at least shed some light on what we're saving the money for if we don't spend up to the cap? So the, the only way it really makes sense for the Bengals organization to cut Joe Mixon is, one, they have to cut him before uh, a week after the free agency period starts. I think that's what the, that deadline is. If they don't cut him before then, you're actually hurting yourselves. You have to pay Mixon like five point. Eight million um, after you cut him. So there's a time limit on this. Two, that dead cap hit, right? You're already having to pay Joe Mixon a certain amount of money if you cut him. You get that free 5.8 up. But then people are saying, let's go find a guy in free agency and you're trying to find value there. You're going to be spending probably like two and a half million, three million on a guy to maybe find some value there to pair him up with Chase Brown and maybe a draft pick. But you're already spending another $2.75 million on another running back. It's not even on your roster. So really you're spending five, six million on a guy to come in and just replace Mixon. That's the way I look at it. And I know that's not exactly how the math works out, but I'm sure that's how the Bengals view it. Really they're going to be spending six million on a guy. So the only way it really makes sense is if you go and get a guy day three in the draft, which then you're looking at your league minimums. And people don't like that because you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what type of running back you're going you're gonna to find in the draft. It could be a boom, could be a bust. I think lots of people would say that you're more than likely to find a guy uh, later on in the draft than you are um, at running back than you are at other positions. But – there's no specific player on our team that you're looking at re-signing either to answer your question. There's no – we've already decided that, at least as a fan base, that we're cool with giving T the tag, but that's not going towards keeping him here long term. That's just extending the inevitable of him leaving. So you're going to cut Mixon – for one year of T. Higgins, basically. That's how I look at it right now because there's no other guy on this roster that you're looking at and going, okay, well, I really want to keep D.J. Reader. Well, he tore his hamstring last year. He might not be the same guy. There's question marks there. Wouzier, we don't, we don't know about him either. He was not the same player after his ACL tear. There's not a guy on this roster that people can point to right now besides T. Higgins, which is a franchise tag, that's going to – be extended long-term. So really you're looking at free agency. And like I've said many, many times before on previous shows, right tackle spot, bear. Now you might be looking at defensive tackle. But then again, I would say let's look at the actual problem then, which is the defensive side, like Sam Hubbard and B.J. Hill, who you could theoretically restructure or even – renegotiated contract with Sam Hubbard. Maybe you add a year on B.J. Hill. I like B.J. Hill. I'd keep him another year or two. There's other options besides cutting Mixon to provide you space on this roster. And to me, I'm with you, Trace. I think Mixon was a great 
roster addition if you went if we want to look at it that way because we thought he was going to be cut last year we did he was great for us this year with the limited amount of time that he was given and let's let's be very clear here people are looking at his numbers this year and he put up 1400 yards without joe burrow without t higgins for most of the season can you imagine what those numbers look like when the roster is healthy can you imagine what that looks like when you actually have the offensive line figured out? Well, people are going to sit there and say, Casey, well, if you watch him play, you know, he doesn't make anybody miss that and the other. And I did send you a DM. The hell yeah. with the copyrights today. Uh, <laughs> I, I want you, I, I, want to, I want to look at this play specifically. I want to break this play. I want to, I want to, I'm going to set the table if you want to call it that. Uh, you were at the goal line in a game in which you had to win in order to try to find yourself in the postseason. Okay, and you know what? You threw it on first down, you threw it on second down, you threw it on third down, and you thought, you know what? There's just no way in the world that they decide that they're not going to give this thing to Joe Mixon. And what do they do? They give it to Joe Mixon. For everybody that says that he can't miss or can't, he, can't, he can't shed a tackle, well, I wanted to see, let's just see what happens here. He gets smoked two yards in the backfield and finds a way to burrow through it and get into the end zone and tie the game with seven minutes left. Oh, by the way, you went on to win that game. You get stuffed right there on fourth and goal, which was specifically just Joe Mixon, by the way. There wasn't any block in there to help. So to act like there was, there's no value at all, it's a, go get anybody you want. That's fine. That's fine. Go ahead. Let, let, let Hurst walk right out the door. Go get Irv Smith because it doesn't matter. Save, save yourself $2 million. Yeah, the one- we're, talking, we're, talking at a, we're talking a delta here, to be clear. We're talking a Delta, Casey, and I, tell me, please tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not trying to be Mr. Naive to this, but we're talking a Delta of $3 million because ultimately you're going to have to find the replacement. And, and I guess people would say, well, you, you could just replace them with the third day running back. Okay, so you got Chase Brown and, and, a, and a rookie running back. That's not an elite running back. I, the, the point I, w- I want to add is you, you're looking around the league and you're looking at the two. I'm looking at two examples specifically, Kyron Williams, Isaiah Pacheco. Both of those two guys, rookies, both of those guys came in and shined. Both of those guys played for, unless Casey has a correction for me, I'd say they played behind pretty solid offensive lines this year. Right? right? Pacheco and Kyron Williams? Yeah. yeah I, mean. I would say the Rams offensive line exceeded expectations. I thought, I thought it was pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah it, it, it went above expectations. Correct. Yeah. So, and then you look at the Bengals' rushing attempts per game. Third fewest in the NFL. They have the third fewest rushing attempts in the NFL at 22 and a half. The only two teams worse were the Commanders and the Seahawks. Joe Mixon's still getting 1,400 all-purpose yards in front of, in, behind one of the world's worst offensive lines consistently. It's just mediocre, mediocre, mediocre every single season. And you have guys like that who come in into great situations and who have decent offensive lines and they're able to shine a little bit. My point is, if you're going to go out and draft a guy, I don't know what, what you get instead of the, the – you get, if you're still going to go with the 22 and a half carries per game, which again, third fewest in the NFL, is that guy going to be able to shine behind a mediocre offensive line? You can say whatever you want about Joe Mixon. Maybe the shine isn't the word I'd use, but he's, at least he's consistent. I know what I'm getting with Joe Mixon. Yeah. I know we're not going to get stuffed in the backfield every single run he has. Right. And, and, that's, th- and that's where I say, how much is $5 million to insure a guy that I know at least can at least get me four yards a carry right. for, for this season? Yeah, I have this metric right here really, really quickly. This is what's been bringing up a lot of the argument, right? Correct. This is a metric that shows rush yards over expectations. Yeah, which let's be clear. Expectations is a funny word. I like yeah. I like when the analytical gurus use that because that is a specific human element involved in a statistical thing. When everyone brings up analytics, they always want to talk about how the stats are the stats and they're the facts. They're, 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 they're exactly what it says. You can't lie with numbers. Well, when you start to put human element inside of those numbers, that's interesting. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's interesting to me that we can sit there and say yards based off expectation. The expectation of who? The expectation of who? Because if you believe in, in if you're totally into what human elements are, and they, then they just go out and get the top rated PFF grades every single year, and then build your roster based off that, you don't even need. I'll tell you where you can spend money as a franchise. You don't even need Duke Tobins of the world. You don't even need any of these people in the front office that have brains and eyes. You just let the computer figure it all out. 
But go ahead with your your right. uh, so, expectation yeah. number. So so this basically shows that Joe Mixon did what he was expected and nothing more. And that to me is exactly what you would want with a poor offensive line. I mean, what, what, if you get anything worse than that, you're going to have a guy that's getting stuffed in the backfield every single time. Every single time. Now, of course, we would want better. But if you looked at the list of those guys, you're talking about guys like Christian McCaffrey, about Derrick Henry, these guys that are really good, guys that you have to spend capital on getting. And so for me, it, the whole conversation about he doesn't give you any more than what than than what's expected, or he, he only gets you four yards and then he gets stopped after a tackle. Well, yeah, I mean, if we had a better offensive line, he would have more opportunities to make people miss. But most of the time, he's getting hit in the backfield or hitting right on the on the line of scrimmage. Okay, so what do you expect from him? What do you expect from a guy that's getting hit in the backfield all the time? Nothing. Nothing more than, than the couple yards every play. And that's the argument that's going to be made by the, the Reed Mouses of the world as to why it doesn't matter what running back you have because if you don't have an offensive line, then what's it matter? That's a fair point. The only point that I'd push back on is, what are you going to do with the extra $3 million? That's the answer I want. You know what? If you're going to come out here and tell me that you're going to cut Joe Mixon no matter what because you need to save that 3 or $4 million, then please God, tell me what you're going to spend the extra three to four million dollars. That's going to be so crazy of a deal savings that you're going to go out and get. What is it? And the other thing too is that the people are trying to use other scenarios that have not happened yet to justify the cutting mix in, like restructuring Orlando Brown Jr. That hasn't happened yet. So why are we even why why is that even part of the conversation? Because if they don't restructure Orlando Brown Jr., then it's only like Trey said, like three million dollars. Yeah, if we include the restructure for Orlando or the the potential restructure with Hubbard or cutting BJ, then it makes maybe a little more sense because you have more money to then possibly extend someone. But at this moment, if that's the only move that you're making, it makes no sense, no sense whatsoever. And Steve said it could be six million. Okay, let's just say it's six million. That's great. You gonna go get it's, Nick Scott? It's five. You wanna go? You, you wanna go get Nick Scott? How much you spent on Nick Scott last year? How much money did you have in, in, in open space last year? You didn't even spend. Is the goal to try to build the best roster to go win the Super Bowl, or is the goal just to sit there and figure out a way, the the best perfect way to build a roster and save as much money as you possibly can, and then therefore you're the world's smartest franchise in the world for for winning? Do you, think the, you think the Rams fan base that year when, when they went and won the Super Bowl, do you think that they were like, you know what, I think we're overpaying for this guy. We, we shouldn't have never done that. I, at some point, like, you didn't even spend up to the cap last time. And we're arguing over $5 million. Now, maybe, just maybe, Duke Tobin can, can figure out some magic and he won't bring in Irv Smith Jr. He won't bring in a Nick Scott. He can bring in an, 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 an aging, really average at best offensive lineman that, that, that was maybe, I don't know, I don't know if they're past or private. And I'm not even trying to talk bad about it, but let's just face it. Did, did, or, did Orlando Brown Jr. live up to the amount of money that he was paid? No. So, if you're saving the money then what are you spending the money on that actually is going to end up making it a for sure better situation? That's all. And when we're talking the delta of three, four, five million dollars, maybe it's six, but you got to find a replacement. So if you're, you're either going to spend draft capital on replacing that, or you're going to have to go out and find another veteran or find somebody that you trust and pay them how much are you going to pay them? Now, the easy answer that everybody can sit here and suggest with Joe Mixon, and maybe it's the right answer, to be clear, is to restructure the deal. It would be a, yeah. It would but be. I got to be honest. I think Joe Mixon, in the back of his mind, is a little pissed about it because he did that last year, and what did it get him? Now, I don't, he was the only consistent bastard out there on the field half the time for that, for that offense. It wouldn't be a restructure because he's on the last year of his deal. It would be a complete pay cut. So... Yeah, try to convince a guy to take a pay cut. Uh, it's hard to do. And and just I, I saw I saw somebody put this in the chat that he had a thousand yards last year. Any any average Joe can do that. There was twelve running backs last season that did it. Twelve. And if you want me to read them, I will. 
McCaffrey, Henry, Williams, Cook, Swift, Connor, Harris, Mixon, Montgomery, Mostert, ATN, and Pollard. That's it. And again, 12 guys with 1,000 yards. Mixon, by far, I'd argue, unless I'm wrong, Casey, I'm pretty sure he had the worst offensive line of the group. I'm almost. I, 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 would, I would say it was close. And this, was, this is with an offense that, that struggled, too, right? Like, there were some times where our backup quarterback did well, Jake Browning. He did well throwing the ball. But teams were stacking the box. I don't think we realized that. People were starting to stack the box on us because they knew the only thing that we could do is possibly run the ball at the end of the year. Now they got proven wrong because Jake Browning is who he is, Jake the Snake. But again, at what, at I, what point does the wide receiver position get the same merit that the running back position gets? Because right. because I'm how come how come the Chiefs too. can go out and win the Super Bowl with literally a bunch of bums at wide receiver, and then all of a sudden, I guess is it just because Mahomes is back there? That's why it gets a pass. But a yet, point. but but yet in this city, we're talking about wanting to extend. Two number ones, and we're trying to pay. We're trying to pay one wide receiver a bajillion dollars at some point because Jamar Chase is elite. I'm not here suggesting that he's worth the money or not worth the money. I have to see how much that uh, that contract ultimately ends up becoming. But my point is, as we sit here on one one side of the aisle and we talk about how one position is completely worthless, you can go get a dime or dozen. It doesn't matter who you get. Meanwhile, we watched the Super Bowl, and quite frankly, when you watched the Super Bowl, did you think to yourself at one moment that, oh my gosh, look at all these elite wide receivers running around? No, not a single time that I think that. Yet, is it just because Patrick Mahomes is so great that that's why the wide receivers don't matter? Or is it just maybe that every position, outside of just a select few, which would be, I'd say, the, in, the, 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 end, the end positions on the line, certainly maybe you could argue the interior a little bit, the quarterback, and outside of that, you could argue that almost every other position to a certain extent has some flexibility to it. It comes down to, to a certain extent, what do you trust and what don't you trust? All I'm saying at the end of it all is that, you know what, for a guy that was on the other side of the aisle about Joe Mixon the last year, I sat and I watched some of them games last year and I thought to myself, you know what, Joe Mixon's better than I thought. And Joe Mixon, if anything, you can't argue this, is one of the most reliable and consistent guys that they have on that offensive side of the ball, period. So, be careful what you wish for. We got a caller? Yeah, you want to you talk right. to the caller? Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be uh, – uh, <clears throat> do, do you think it's CJ? I think it's – I think it's. Uh, let's see who it is. It might be Joe. All right, uh, got the caller. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? This is uh, – Matt from Middletown, calling to right. hijack the show again. Let's do it, Matt. Well, I got an easy answer for you. They like gotta cut answers. Joe Mixon. They yes. gotta cut Joe Mixon to make room for Elliot on the payroll. <laughs> this is true. What's Elliot gonna bring to the table? You think? I'll let Elliot, I'll let Elliot answer that. I think it's well. Uh, the good news is, is they don't. I, I don't bring, even think they need to cut Elliott. I think I'd bring an explosiveness that the the that the running back position's never seen before. That's for sure. I think you'd bring good team morale. Do, I think you would take over Zach Taylor's position. Yeah, I'd be like a potato with legs out there. You just couldn't knock me down. I'd you'd be the John, you'd be the Jonathan India of the Cincinnati Bengals. That's right. That's right. That's why you like him so much. That's one hundred percent. He's a leader, and I'd be a leader out there. No, no question. Fair about enough. It. Uh, Matt, do you have anything? Do you have anything that uh, you, you genuinely feel about this situation, or no? Uh, I mean, I will say I think he played a lot better than a lot of us thought he would. I think the year prior was uh, definitely a down year for for him. And I mean, let's be honest. It, you know, getting a elite running back in the draft is a dime a dozen. I mean, it's probably not going to happen. So you're better off just going all in this year and. Uh, Running it back one more year, and then after next season, it's going to be a got to get back to the table and figure out what we're going to do. But that'd be that'd be my guess. All that? right, yeah, that's fair. Um, all right, Matt, uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, if you have anything else, you can feel free to call right back. Uh, here's the thing about that the the whole the whole window thing, right? We we we've heard about the window situation with Joe, and hey, as long as I'm here, the window's open. And 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 there's some merit to that, yes. But if we can be honest with ourselves. This group of this group of uh, of offensive players that we've come to know over the recent years with this franchise is 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 the, the door is closing. 
the door is closing. And is Joe Mixon a part of those conversations? Usually when people are talking about the future of the Bengals, he's not. It's as simple as this. It's as simple as this. If you're for cutting Joe Burrow, fine. Mixon. Or excuse me, Mixon. <laughs> Should you cut Joe Burrow? No. <laughs> no, I don't want to I don't want that smoke today. And I you know what? That was a that was an accident. If you're going to cut Joe Mixon, fine. Then you need to at least have an answer for spending up to the cap and have something that you can't otherwise get that you want in return because you've cut Joe Mixon. Maybe you'll convince yourself that you're going to go find out find a better player for less money than Joe. And if that's the case, be careful what you wish for. That's all I'm trying to say. I'd rather take the conservative approach of knowing what I'm getting with Joe Mixon, a guy that's been in our uniform for a long time, a guy that I've come to rely upon, quite frankly, to be there when it matters the most, and he's performed pretty well. It wasn't that long ago that the Cincinnati Bengals had one of the most historical wins in franchise history, and he was a large part and a big reason as to why it was. In fact, if I remember right, it was maybe the biggest win in the city last year. They went to Buffalo, and I'm pretty sure Joe Mixon was a big, big part of why they went up there and won. Yeah. But we don't want to give credit because it wasn't him. It was the offensive line. Which is it? Just be careful. If you're going to cut Joe Mixon, then I want an answer as to, that, that, as to what you're going to get in return. That's it. And you better spend up to the cap. I'm sitting here tired of worried about talking about the cap. Oh, we, 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 this. The, the Bengals have the most, one of the most friendliest cap situations in all, of, in all of football. Yet, we sit here and we're worried about a couple million dollars. Right. Go ahead. I agree. I just wanted to put a tiny little bow, the, the, some of the windows here. We'll know a lot more about what they're going to do with Joe Mixon after the franchise tag deadline because then we'll finally have a – final roster of all the free agents available to the Bengals to be able to spend that money on. Um, There's a week after the free uh, agent period begins. After that one week, it does not make sense for the Bengals to cut Joe Mixon. So we will know some point within the second week of March what they're going to do with Mixon. So, yeah, we we got into a long time before that happens, uh, like two, three weeks from now. So this is going to be a long time on Bengals Twitter having another argument rant about Joe Mixon once again. I can't wait. I <laughs> cannot wait. I believe we're going to do some ads right now, Trace. And yeah, then, let's do some, let's do some ads. We're going to do some announcements. Is that we'll, right? Uh, let's do it. We'll do it. I told you that this is why you know we might not be perfect. I'll figure out the announcement situation. But okay. here's the deal. We're going we're gonna to go. We're going to pay our bills. We're going to do the ads. We'll come back. I want to talk about NCAA 25 in a, in, in a situation that's a little more important than just the video game. Um, and then, as I said, once we kind of get uh, that – what's the right word to use here? Once we tie a ribbon around kind of where we're at, we might have a special guest joining the studio. When they're here and they're ready, we'll make that announcement. Okay. All Is right. there a chance that we don't make the announcement? Is that what you're saying? I mean, there's always a chance. I don't know. I haven't looked at my phone in a while. I'd like to make – see here. Because I feel like we promised the announcement. Reed had a nice little tweet about it. But no, I, I, I think we're good. I okay. think we're good. We, we, we might come back. We might do the big announcement. We might talk NCAA 25. All we right. don't know. That is a surprise of the day. We'll be right back. But before we go, we're not really going anywhere. We're going to Casey McAllister to read some ads. Yeah. Casey, Casey we, should, we, should, we should make an old commercial video like we did before I got here. Everybody, everybody in the chat wants that. Everyone wants that in the yeah. chat. I think Sir Boy wants the old we, we ads need, back. That's need, the only guy that wants those ads back, those tired me, ads. We need me and Reed to narrate them all, and I think everybody would love it. I think it, I think it would be great. I think people would enjoy it for maybe one time, but then it would get really tired that we have a bunch of ads. Like the weather bit. Like, well, you do the uh, weather sometime soon. i got to do the weather sometime oh, soon. Oh, yeah, eventually. it's nice. We definitely need the weather to come yeah. back. It's starting to get better out Just there. Just little so. bits. You didn't close the door all the way. He's going back out. He's going back out. Anyways, the ad break 
Uh, this uh, little segment is brought to you by Encore Technologies. Ooh. Encore Technologies provides IT solutions for a data center of the world. With the suite of services from mobile computing to desktop to data center, supporting both centralized and work from home computing modules to improve efficiency and productivity. It is impressive how you have that memorized. I, you know, Paul memorized it too, and I thought it was crazy. After you do this every day, it's not that hard. Yeah. But the path to innovation begins here. Visit Encore.tech. Let me tell you about this lovely bottle of water right here. Pony water. Oh. You hear that? That's the sound of the magic elixir called Pawnee Water. Mm. Made right here in Hamilton, Ohio. Uses natural limestone filtration, unlike the artificial processing that other brands use. The result is a healthy alkaline water, and some say the best tasting water in the world. Visit Pawnee Water at P-A-H-H-N-I-Water.com to see where you can buy this great tasting water. Get your coffee from UDF, drink lots of Pawnee Water, and get your technology solutions from Encore.tech. Um, incorrect. <laughs> and I don't think I don't I don't think anyone can see it because the light is so bright. But it definitely says loser. <laughs> I sticky noted a note that said loser on his forehead. <laughs> you got you got him. Oh yeah. Oh man. Burnt me. What a time to be alive. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive is right. All right. So uh, here's the deal. We're gonna do we're gonna do the news, uh, whatever we want to call it, big news, breaking news, important news, C box update. We had all different types of terms to use here before uh, before we went on the show. Exactly what we wanted to call it, uh, but we have something that's uh, pretty. I don't know what the right word to use would be. Pretty cool. Um, we obviously developed a relationship um, with this person. Over the last, I don't know, a couple months, uh, which allowed us to gain some access into some things that were, that were um, pretty awesome. And that was Justin Kenner and uh, his team at 1410 up in Dayton on ESPN Radio. And Justin is joining us in studio now. So, Justin, I don't know if you want to give a quick little rundown of, of, of kind of what you've been doing of, of, uh, of the recent years, if you will. And then I'll kind of uh, delve us into kind of what we plan to do moving forward. Oh, absolutely. First of all, this place is really well done. So uh, it's my first time, you know, stopping in the studio and seeing everyone. I haven't met you two yet. <laughs> You're hilarious. Get Thank to you, you in a moment. Get to you in a moment. Your stuff with Marty is always really good. But uh, Trace, no, um, no. So last week I was having lunch with Bob Castellini and he said, hey, I just purchased this uh, business called Chatterbox Sports. And uh, I would love if you would uh, kind of, you know, be a guest on, on my show. And I was like, oh, absolutely, Bob, just anything. <laughs> Um, you know, keep the team Bob, right? Like that, no, but uh, no. Uh, so I'm the program director, afternoon host in Dayton, Ohio for our 1410 ESPN radio affiliate uh, there. And I've been affiliated with them for about 10 years. I've been full-time for about five doing the show. And, uh, you know, we're a Cincinnati Reds affiliate and that's kind of how our paths crossed a little bit. But uh, there's some opportunity to kind of combine our radio station with your digital platform. You guys are kicking ass, by the way. I don't know what your rules are. I know I could say ass on radio. You're allowed so to say on the radio. Here. You're definitely allowed to say it Yeah, here. like uh, what was that George Carlin bit of all the words you're not allowed to say. I always like to walk <laughs> the line a little bit, but, uh, you know, no. Uh, but I think there's some major opportunity, big opportunity here. Jealous of you guys heading to spring training coming up and everything like that. And I know we're going to be working together, so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, and I'll let you kind of give more of the details of how we're going to be working together. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Pretty excited. Yeah, so here's the situation. We got to talk, uh, met, like I said, went up there and met with Justin a few weeks ago. And uh, the idea of, of his show, which is uh, Kenner and Kev, it's on 1410 in Dayton, Wing AM, ESPN Radio. Uh, it is on from three to six every single day. I think you even mentioned, obviously, it's, it's more of a three to five type segment. You have a, 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 an hour that gets taped. But nonetheless, he's on from, we'll say, from three to five live uh, up in Dayton every single day. And I said, well, what, what about the concept of, um, of kind of taking what we've done where we're at with Chatterbox and incorporating that up there and seeing if we can't kind of add that to the programming that we're going to offer here at Chatterbox and and uh, Justin fortunately was open to that. And the opposite uh, as well, uh, again, I don't know how many of the folks in Dayton are, are ready to listen to what we do around here. And, and uh, you even sent me a message and said, you guys take any breaks? Well, we don't really take any breaks. Uh, we, we've, we've talked about how we're going to have to try to probably have some fun with this a little bit. We're going to have to sign off the air and then sign right back on the air just so we can kind of cut it up. But we're going to go uh, from the 12 to 3 slot in, uh, in Dayton. 
uh, for the uh, for as long as you'll have us. We'll see how long we make it on the radio. Uh, that's the concern we have. You you think you're concerned about the conversations and the language that's going to get used uh, on this show? You should think about how we're concerned about what we're supposed to say on the radio. Now the good news is, is we don't trust ourselves enough to be live there. So we'll be 10 to 12 here every single day, obviously, and then we'll go from noon to three uh, on ESPN radio in Dayton, 1410 Wing AM. But again, just another opportunity for people on both sides of the aisle, if you will, to hear from, uh, hear from us. So I don't know if anyone has, uh, has, has heard your show on this platform. Probably it not. seems based off the chat, some have. They're probably not fans. I, I don't know if you <laughs> did your homework, but like, you know, there our listeners will be fans of you guys because, like, finally someone that actually is going to, like, you know, really drool over the Bengals on the stage. I'm a Browns fan, so yeah. I have that working against <laughs> hey, nothing, me. Hey, nothing, nothing bad about being a Pack. I'm a Packers fan, a Browns fan, but then we do have, thankfully, go. we he's do. He's a Kansas thankfully, fan, he's a Georgia fan. Here we go. And you just go down Here all around the country, go. and you really what it is, if you get a map. And you just throw a ball in the air, close your eyes, throw a ball wherever it lands. Trace is probably a fan of that team. It's better than him saying, I'm a Yankees and a Cowboys and a Lakers fan. At least it's better than that. Like, let's be real. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm, a, I'm not even going to check the chat. That's kind of a rule with me. I mean, usually, I mean, if anyone ever says anything nice about me, it'll be the first time. Uh, but, yeah, Bengals fan's not a big fan of me, and that's totally fine. I always laugh, though. I could criticize the hell out of the Reds. Totally fine. People love to just rip the Reds. But if... I say anything bad about the Cincinnati Bengals, holy crap, it's like going to church and making a Jesus joke in front of everybody. Yeah. It's like it's just not going to land very well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I mean, hey, at least if nothing else, the, they'll pile on you in the chat. You'll be fine. It'll, you'll figure your way out through the, the, the murky waters that are the, uh, the Chatterbox chat. Um, but that's the news. So, to be clear, right around uh, – I should probably have this in front of me. Um, uh, let me I'll actually, I'll, I'll, I will get it. I'll give you the exact date. Uh, March 25th. So on March 25th, uh, Justin Kinner and Kev, right? I yep. got that right. Uh, yep. The Kinner and Kev show will start to air on Chatterbox from 3 to 5. We will be going on air on ESPN Radio in Dayton um, from noon to 3. And we'll probably mix in some red stuff and, and, uh, and obviously this show as well on that slot up in Dayton. And we'll try to kind of be fluid. We'll figure it out as we go, as they say. But, uh, but, yeah, we're excited about it. And uh, if you want, you can hang around here and talk sports for the next uh, – I know you don't talk about sports enough, but you can talk, you can talk some sports here for the next 30 minutes. And then well, Christ, uh, be 30 minutes I think we're going to go up and we're going to we're gonna try to get their, uh, their studio kind of uh, outfitted, at least the start of getting it outfitted uh, for coming onto our platform. So that's the news. That's the notes. Elliot, how do you feel about being on the radio? Uh, I, know wow. you, I know you have no experience with the radio. Right back to it, huh? You leave and then you're right back to it. What's, what's that old uh, Godfather quote? You know, they, they bring you right back in. What's, so, what's your radio experience? I worked at, uh, so I worked for 700 WLW and ESPN 1530. Oh, real radio station. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so I got to work with some very cool people. Uh, one of them's in the chat now, I believe, Austin Elmore. Um, I think he unfollowed me on social media. Oh, no. He followed me and then unfollowed oh, no. me. He didn't like my uh, Bengals takes, I don't oh, think. No. But Austin, I'm sure you're a great dude, but oh, uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm well, sorry. This beef, I can't handle the beefs. Uh, I, we got enough beefs here already. <laughs> with, uh, but anyway, anyway, so I have a couple questions. Now, are, do you guys run the – do you guys have like the – I know it's not iHeartRadio – but when you guys go to breaks, do you guys have like your own bumper music and stuff still like that? Yep. You guys now do you? Is there like a catalog of music you have? Yes. Same thing. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool. So that we'll, so we're real radio. So that's real radio. I, so I, we I, are like just like seven hundred WLW, yeah, the yes. big one. Okay. Yeah. Just I've always told people that. Now I'm glad to know that we're at least on to something. So good. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to think what else. I'm just trying to think of what else. So is it? Do you guys? Is it? So it's ESPN fourteen ten. Yes. Is the number. Is you guys? Is there like ESPN programming on after, like, or before or after? Kind of like ESPN fifteen thirty. Yeah. So it's ESPN twenty four hours. We pop in from three to six and just kind of bring a little bit of a okay. national headlines, but with a local take on them, basically. Okay. So, yep. All right. Interesting. I all don't right. believe in. Oh well, you know, there's all Bengals fans around you, so you need to be a Bengals fan. I'm like, no, no, no. My boss paid me to give my opinions. If uh, he wanted your opinions, he would have hired you. Uh, <laughs> is kind of how it goes. But uh, no, but yeah, like it's 
very fortunate to, to work in the industry I do and then to see like how it's kind of expanding a bit, especially in the digital realm. What you guys are doing is pretty badass. So, and you, yeah. Do you have a producer for your show or do you do it yourself? You're the producer. That's what I figured. That's yeah. what I figured. So you're running. You're, you're Just running like 700, shows. right? Is That's Lance well, McAllister board hopping his own show? No, and, well, I know. Mo Egger, you Mo, know. Mo can do it. Mo can do it. And Austin can do it. Uh, I know for <laughs> sure Sloan can do it, I think, too. But I, I was, I would. They do have a line of producers. I won't uh, get into our pay, but I, we did do it, and it was certainly, it was certainly a fun experience while I was there. So I'm, I'm excited to get back. I'm excited to get right back to it. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, those that are, that are, it seems like every time we make an announcement, man, it's like, uh, it's <laughs> it, what, what's the game that you play where you whisper something to that person and then they whisper it to the next person. Telephone? And then, is it what is it? Telephone? Is it telephone? Yeah, yeah, but whatever. It, you know, we're like every single time we do this, it's like you're the the chat is like the tenth person down the line of the whisper, and next thing you know, there's all all sorts of things. So to be clear, let's do this. Once so you're not on 700 WLW. We, we're not, not we're on 700 WLW. <laughs> no. We are going from Are we on 10? 55 KRC? <laughs> let, let, let's make sure this is clear. Okay? okay, I don't want to do this in the chat for the next two weeks. Um, <laughs> it's from 10A to 12P right here like it's always been. Nothing's changing at all there. However, if, uh, if you are someone in Dayton that listens to 1410, Little do they know, on March 20th, whatever that was, 25th, excuse me, uh, their ears will hear us, which is basically a recording of this show for that time slot. Chatterbox Reds will also kind of have a place there as well. But then, maybe the more important news for the folks that watch uh, on our platform, from 3 to 5, we'll, we will be providing a show to you called Kenner and Kev. And again, to be clear... Justin will be on that show. He's, he's, he's the kinder part of that. There's another guy named Kev. I'm sure that he will get introduced as we kind of get closer and closer to this date. But more or less, if you like sports talk and you like local sports talk and you like to have a little bit of, of an opinion and a, a Justin checks the chat from time to time, I'm sure to see what people are talking about or what people think. Ultimately, it's just adding to what we already do. So nothing changes, really, outside of more opportunities and more programming. For you, um, some would say hopefully that clears it up. That so, some would say we're expanding. So you're a funny guy. <laughs> I mean, you I don't know are. what the true definition. I got to be is, honest. Yeah. Like uh, Elliot, from time to time, has these little zingers, and, uh, yeah. and they're funny. They make me laugh. Uh, but I want to talk about something here that that might be of interest. Uh, NCAA 25 <laughs> is is obviously the the hotly uh, aspired to have video game that's going to come out this summer. NCAA football was a staple for many of us, maybe many of you in the chat. It's something that we love to take that Mac school and build them up, and then you go and you get a big job at a Power Five and you try to win a national championship. Um, that is coming back this summer. However, there was news that broke that the way in which players are going to be in the game now is essentially they're going to get paid $600 if they opt to be in the game. If they opt out of the game, then you're not allowed to create a player like their likeness. So there's definitely some kind of infrastructure here that the NCAA has built. And I say NCAA, I should say EA Sports. EA Sports is built to try to protect these players that opt out to make sure that there aren't folks out there, because there are, who build rosters and put them in the game anyways. But I have a thing where now... I get on X.com and I see people complaining about the fact that the players only get $600. Somehow now it says these players need to be protected. This is the first sign of there being needing to be a collective bargaining agreement about how the players need to have a union. And this is where you, this is where Elliot, you ready for it? I'm ready. This is where you lose me (laughs) because nobody that buys this game outside of a handful of players is going to not buy the game because somebody opted out. I think if, if you want to be honest, the $600 is very, very, I think it's actually a pretty nice thing they're doing. And you know what? I hear you. Some of you are going to sit here and say, Trace, you're being ridiculous. CJ Strouds of the world, the Tim Tebow's of the world, the, 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 the Justin, uh, not Justin, but the um, Caleb Williams of the world, Justin Fields, those are worth more than $600. And I would say you're right. They are. But I, can, I got news for you. 
This is either going to be fair across the board to where if you're going to pay the, the, the proverbial backup safety $600 to be in the game, then you don't have enough money, quite frankly, to make it fair, which is what everyone wants to make this to be. It isn't fair. It's going to be almost impossible to be fair unless you have this one idea, which I think you can implement, and I don't think it'd be all that difficult. For every player that wants to opt out, that the, that the game deems as being so valuable they think people wouldn't buy it or people would be upset that they're not in it, that's going to be a handful of players, let's face it. We're talking about the starting quarterback. We're talking about the starting running back. We're talking about the Marvin Harrison Juniors of the world. We're talking about the elite of the elite players. If those players decide they want to opt out, then the NCAA football game should make in the opportunity to purchase their emote, if you want to call it that. Not emote, because that's obviously a motion. But my point is, is that you should be able to purchase that player inside the game if you'd like to. Simple. Then you get to find out what you're worth. You set the price point of how much it costs to add that player into the game. See how, much, see how many people buy it. Well, then you'll find out how much you're actually worth. That should be 100% the way in which they go about this. But if I hear, and I see one more time on X.com, about how the players are getting taken advantage of because they're only getting $600 and a copy of the game, do you think for a single second that people actually care? Certainly, no doubt, if nobody's in the game, it makes a big difference. But again, where do you justify the cost? How, I mean, there's how many players on a football team? There's literally right around, let's call it an even number because I'm not very good at math, but 100 players on a college football team. Do you think that the value of having the players is worth that much more money? What is it, 600 mm-hmm. times 100? Not very good at math. Elliot, what is that math? <laughs> if you don't know it, please pull out your calculator. I mean, that was what a mean thing to do to somebody who was a C student in math at best. 600 times 100, 60,000, yeah. So we're spending, let's just say, $60,000 roughly on every single team in this game. And, I, and that's where, again, <clears throat> I think the NCAA football game, EA Sports, I need to do that better, is being nice. They're being nice. Because they could have railroaded these kids, in my opinion. They could have said, you know what, we're going to make it all random players the whole thing random and we're going to go to the elite level players that everybody cares about and we're going to we're going to do a deal with them specifically but you know what that defensive that interior defensive lineman it doesn't matter what their name is because the vast majority of people don't care and after the first few years of the dynasty mode all of those names erode away anyways so the players aren't getting hosed let's stop acting like they are and if you think that they are then i would simply ask you what do you think they're actually worth Is it the structure of the game? Is it the brands? Or is it the player? Because I'd venture to say it's the brands more than anything. If you turn on the video game and you're an Ohio State fan, you want to play in the shoe. You want the mascots. You want the fight songs. You want the nostalgia of basically running the... You want want the ability to run the program. It's nothing more than a dynasty mode. Um... I, it might be an, it I, might be an overly no, it might be an overly critical, critical no, about the idea that I there, think the players are more than fair fair I, I think there's a kid on uh, Appalachian State uh, the third string punter or some guy on special teams that's like I want to be in this game I'll take my six hundred dollars in a free copy if you don't want to do it you're free to opt out that's part of the deal but you are getting paid you can't offer everybody a hundred thousand dollars to be in the game it's not how it's not how life works. I'm pretty sure uh, Charles Barkley made a big stink about it when in, in NBA Michael Jordan in NBA 2K when uh, you know they, they weren't getting paid there either really a ton so uh, no I think you're I, I think you're spot on six hundred dollars is fair a free copy of the game is fair I don't know what else you want it's 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 almost it's almost an honor I don't want to I don't want to use that word but it, it's almost an honor to be included in this game and, and to be paid for it I think is pretty damn cool could you it, imagine deciding to opt out if you're like a defensive end. Or, or and I keep picking on the defensive line. Let's say, let's say, say you're a, a center. Could you imagine 
deciding that you do not want to be in the game. And like this ends up being the most iconic game of all time because it was the first one that came back. And then 20 years later, your, your grandkid like is like, are you in the game, Grandpa, or whatever it is? And you're like, no, nah, I, I, I want to stick it to the man. Yeah. They were going to pay me $600. I was worth 605 and it's, it's just one of those things where, like, if you're a high, higher-paid NIL player, right, you're already getting paid. So why, why are we turning down free money? And then if you're a guy who's not getting paid by the NIL, why wouldn't you just take your money and be like, all right, I am getting paid a little bit now, something. So I, I, I don't understand why anybody would really opt out of it unless uh, you're just being a little bit petty. It's a select few, and I would agree with that. I actually do believe if there is a Tim Tebow, okay, if you're on the cover of the game, you should get more than $600. But I think the easiest way to do that would be you could opt into some kind of collective, right? Which they're already in part of a collective. I think that's how this whole thing went down yeah. in the first place. But you could opt into another collective that says, hey, we deem it. The, the EA Sports deems these players as being valuable, and they're the ones that have opted out. We're going to offer – maybe you offer it as a whole. Like maybe you, you enter the game, and there's a package that says, hey, would you like the premium player package? And you got to pay 20 bucks. And you get the top 50 people that opted out that EA Sports really wants them in the game. And then that way, you, that, that, then you get your money that way. It seems as if it shouldn't be one way or the other. And I mean. would still say, even if you are, let's say, a, let's say a player makes the cover and this is a high-paid NIL, he doesn't want to be on it. If you're on the cover, you're still getting publicity. It's almost like Usher at the Super Bowl halftime show. He doesn't get paid for that, but he gets all the eyeballs in the world on him. And when he drops his new album in a week, or if he already dropped it, I don't know when he drops it, a lot more people are going to download it now. So more people are going to know your name, uh, your draft stock will surely go up, and, and all this good stuff. So yeah, I, there's no doubt there's ways, in, there's ways for these players to make money inside the game. I, I, even if it's stupid emotes. I, 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 and, I, yeah. and I say stupid, but I mean, they're not stupid. Clearly, Fortnite made a billion dollars off of it. I'm saying that these kids, if, if Marvin Harrison Jr. has a touchdown dance, well, the hell, make that an emote that you have to buy. And the kids will buy it. People will buy it. And then, therefore, that guy makes money. That's how you find true the sense of the word fair. Because if people are spending extra money because of that specific individual player, then sure, clearly there's merit to that guy. But to sit here and suggest that you have to go out and you got to pay Kent State Center, <laughs> I mean, what are we doing? If EA was smart, can you look up Kent State that. Center? I'm going to apologize to his family. Yes. Thank you. If they were smart, they would do something where there was some downloadable content, some other deal with the guys that want to get paid more. I think that's a that's a fair take, Trace. I just did the math on all 134 teams on your hypothetical. Yes. It would be eight million dollars that they would have to pay out. Right. Eight million dollars. Like I don't I don't know how much it costs to make the game, how much right. it already costs for them to get all right. these. Right. You, well, you, like, you have to ask yourself of of, of if, if they put random players in there versus real players in there. Is eight million dollars worth it? I would say it is worth it, but the thing is, is like out of all the players they're putting in the game, how many of the eight million actually matter? Right. Not many. There's really not many. I mean, what would you say? What's what's a fair Justin? What's a fair number per team you think people actually care about? Not many. Well, for one, real quick to feed off what he just said, I saw a graphic yesterday. Darren Rovell had tweeted out that the last video game before it went, you know dormant whatever 14 they, NCAA 14. I think they made eight million off that game so <laughs> they're spending about six point something mil it's about the number you had thrown out they're spending about six point something mil on this you know six hundred dollars a player thing so like they're losing they're, like I, I don't see how they're gonna, and like if they repeat that number again making that eight mil off this video game that's coming out which I think they're gonna make way more than that just because the buzz and the anticipation Correct. and the fact that they had to wait for it my big thing about all this is you keep saying people are saying they're only getting $600. I have that same mindset to a certain degree because I'm like, we haven't had a damn video game for 10 years because of $600 a player. Like, that's why I'm like looking at it from that perspective. It's not that much money, which means that's what's been keeping us from having a video game for the last 10 years or however long it was ago since the last one. So, um, I look, I'm glad that they're getting something and I wouldn't not be that surprised to see if certain players have a little bit more leverage to be able to kind of get more money. Like yeah. you talked about the cover athletes or whoever, uh, but EA could also just stick it to them and just put logos of the teams in there. So who knows? Yeah. But what was that sound by the way? That was, <laughs> it was outside. Was that know. outside? It, it, it's, Andrew, certainly... it's my fans trying to get in to <laughs> throw stuff at me. I'm just uh, saying, uh, Andrew page is the starting center. 
Andrew Page. Yeah. All right, Andrew. Andrew, I do apologize. I did not mean that. Just catching strays for no you. damn reason. Like Andrew <laughs> Page, <laughs> I'm sure you're a great football player, and I did not mean to disparage you in any shape or fashion. Whatever. However, I hope you enjoy your $600 that you rightfully probably didn't really need or deserve, and I hope you enjoy the pizza and the free video game. Yeah. Whatever uh, new franchise or not franchise dynasty you make, you got to get this guy from the transfer portal immediately. Good, good, good call. Yeah. And I also, I'm still sticking to this. We got to be ahead of the curve here. We got to be ahead of the game. If it's like Microsoft, we might not have the best product, but if you're the first one to the market, you just dominate the market because no one has another opportunity. Yeah. I would really like for Chatterbox to have the best league there is known to man for this dynasty situation. We have to. It's gonna. It's gonna take a lot of work. This is gonna yeah. take a lot of work. We gotta because start we're gonna stream these. We're gonna make it to where these are streamed. We're gonna have to create a different YouTube channel. Like this is a genuine thing I'd like to do. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm all, all in. We're, lo- we're we're willing to like as gonna, long as the game's not like the current. Madden, how many teams? <laughs> how many players should we allow in the league that before it gets a little? It's too many. Well, the the initial idea is to like. B teams that are not like the, the staples, right? Like the Ohio States and Penn States. Yeah, right? you'd have like, to, you have to start in the Mac. A, teams I, I think it's you have to start in the same conference, and we got to find a conference that's just you know the Mac. Yeah, the Mac's a great one. The Mac. By the way, can I, Casey, can you do the breaking news sounder, please? I like how that never stops. By the way, I think it usually does on real real TV. Going, the Reds have signed seven-year veteran, or eight-year veteran. Tony Kemp. Tony Kemp is now a Cincinnati Red. Minor league deal. Hmm. Wow. About that. The infamous minor league deals by the Reds ahead of camp, man. You gotta love it. <laughs> hey, man, gotta Harrison. love it. Will uh, contribute something, and sure, during shrimp spring training. I don't know what. <laughs> Tony Kemp's not bad. Tony Kemp's not bad. Played, yeah. for the, played for the A's the past four seasons. Played for the Cubs a little bit. Astros. I like Tony Kemp. I won't make the roster, but it's fun. Any thoughts, Trace, on Tony Kemp? Not really, no. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to say anything because I think I'm going to try to take the, 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 the very, very good advice that I've been given before. I don't always oblige by it, but it's uh, if you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything at all. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do here. Damn. Well, was there something bad about saying that? I don't know. It just means you're not going to say anything nice about him. So just like Tony Kemp. Because <laughs> the last Kemp worked out in Cincinnati. <laughs> Uh, what a, what a bum in. that guy was. AJ chimes in in the chat. Uh, Tony Kemp stinks. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> so. The buzz is palpable <clears throat> right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. For Kemp. <laughs> um, MLB jerseys. I'm trying to r- – r- Roger in his all caps. I can't see. Um, wait, so Trace should be done for the day. <clears throat> Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Don't know Are you guys about means. to talk about the see-through pants? Yeah, we're about so to we're see basically it. like all baseball players should just get an OnlyFans account at this point. Just <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to. You, the, no, you know. it's perfectly yeah. fine. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I the, the, the question is, is how did it get to this point? Like, what happened? And, and I know the MLB executives are trying to cover their tail now, boy. They are. You see them scrambling. I can you need see to cover them. everyone else's the, tail too. To be honest, yeah. like, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, there's a lot being exposed with those pants. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's fair. It's a good point. Um, but it, it seems as if it seems as if MLB executives right now are discussing and acting as if this was already something that was agreed upon, and that was, this was already something that the players said that they enjoyed or liked. I think that they even they, they even maybe referenced the All Star game of last season, and they talked about how the whole focus in mind was performance, was the term that they used. Well, at some point, I mean, if it was just strictly the if it was just strictly performance, it doesn't seem as if they are very restrictive athletic gear that they are wearing. But at some point, what, what, what's wrong with the birthday suit at that point? I mean, it, 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 we're getting closer and closer to the point where you have to ask yourself, how in the world did this happen? You can't mess jerseys up this bad. It's impossible. It seems impossible. These pants... Genuinely, when everyone's talking about see-through, Casey, I don't know if you, if, if, if you have some, the, the some reference points here, some images, and I know, yeah, that, I, yeah. I, I, I know that you said we're not allowed to show them because they're too graphic. I'm, I, I, is this an internet show or not? Are we going to get in trouble? They're wearing pants. All right, let me find They're them. wearing pants. Casey, I'll send you new ones. But, but, yeah. but that just goes to show you how bad these actually are, is that Elliot Rearing, of all people, was worried about <laughs> showing you on the internet a photo 
of a player that's actually wearing their uniform. That's how bad this is. Is you thought it was too graphic to show when a player was actually wearing their uniform. How in the world can you fail this miserably as a large? This isn't, you know, this isn't like the local little league team that doesn't have a ton of money and they just are they're trying to they're they're trying to outfit the their teams and you know what this one great sales rep came into town and they 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 boasted about how great these new pants were and look they're they're a quarter of the price, Mr. Little League Director. I could I could give that little league director a pass, but this is the big leagues. We're gonna have we're gonna. This ha- is the this is the biggest league of them all. Can you imagine when it starts raining? <laughs> could you imagine what's gonna happen when when it starts raining outside? These guys are sliding all over the field. So Pervert. I, just, I made sure I double checked to turn on monetization before we did this. Okay. <laughs> and then, by the way, this is this I, this has to be an issue that broadcasts are gonna have, right? When you're when you're zooming in on a player at first base. I mean, these are these are these are like this is the guy fully dressed. This is a photo shoot. This is a photo shoot of a player for the San Francisco Giants. This is an in-game photo of a player. Again, I don't know. I we're gonna have some serious issues here uh, on broadcasts across the country. This is why you listen to radio, folks. That's right. <laughs> you listen to I, radio. I, I mean, I I don't know. I, I I'm a little concerned. I, and uh, again, Trace is right. MLB jerseys are awesome. There's so many cool ones. There's throwbacks. There's so many ways to make MLB jerseys cool. And they've taken away all that magic and made the pants see-through. What are we doing? What, what are we doing? Because I don't get it. I don't get why would you change a good thing. I guess money is the, is the answer there. But at some point, man, you, you have a good thing. Just stick with it. Just stick with it. We don't need to see these guys under carriages. We don't. Black Blackmore chimes in and says, "Talk about some nut cutters." <laughs> Female viewership might skyrocket. It might. It like might. maybe that was the whole goal of this. I mean, the NFL has Taylor Swift to help with that, and Major League Baseball has. And we've this. got guys with see-through underwear on there, but it's 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 tough, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's going to be a story all season long. Nick Kirby had a conspiracy yesterday that um, MLB is doing this on purpose. Rob Manfred intentionally did this. So people would talk about Major League Baseball once every while, once in once in a while. So maybe this is so. this is a marketing it's strategy. Maybe it's all poor. The spring train. I've always thought the spring training uh, uniform, and really by uniform I mean hat. I used to always think the spring training hats were terrible. I mean they were so bad. They they've always looked disgusting. And then it's like you know what though, it's just spring training. Who really cares? At the end of the day, they can wear whatever they want. And then all of a sudden, on opening day, <clears throat> they get the legit jersey and everything is fine. Maybe that's what this is. Maybe it's a spring training hiccup. But they're not that smart, marketing-wise. No. Uh, they're, they're just not. I mean, well, they've, they change not, they've it, never done think? anything smart marketing-wise. you think wise. they make a change? Like, this they have to make a change. This isn't the exact same, but, I mean, the NBA tried rolling out, like, a new basketball. I yeah. forgot how many years ago that was, but, like, they started the season with it. So many players complained throughout the preseason and the start that they ultimately made a change midseason. I'm not saying the basketball is the same as a jersey, but you would think they would have to make a change with the outcry that's coming here. But then again, you never know with Major League Baseball, so – one of the things I can't get out of my mind is, Trace, I forget when you said this about the MLB and what they should do, and you said they should just copy exactly what the NFL should do. Do you think the NFL would do something like this? That's what I can't get out of my mind. you think that any, any, no, any you, major the NFL, team would The NFL purposely? takes their jerseys very seriously, and those guys get fined if they don't wear socks or if, they're, if they're, uh, their pants aren't, like, basically trimmed right at their knee line have you seen the situations where there's been guys that have pulled their their pants above their knees to where they've gotten fined because of that the nfl takes their their image incredibly seriously uh major league baseball hey we'll see what ultimately ends up happening i just cannot believe and i i see what you meant by that now i see what you meant by that you were very concerned that we were going to show a player yeah. that was and we did it that anyway. was posing in their uniform for marketing purposes for that franchise, and you were concerned about showing it on off the bench. All right, we have another thing to discuss as it pertains to the Major League Baseball, and more importantly, the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds are going to spring training, and spring training's officially is underway with games starting this Saturday. Chatterbox Reds will be live right after that game. But here's the thing. You don't get to see many of them. The Reds are the lowest, and I, when I mean the lowest, I'm talking specifically 100%, the lowest amount of games that you can watch in spring training 
with 10. Now, some of that is because other teams are broadcasting the games for them. Bally's has three games currently in the spring training schedule to show us Red's spring training games. Now, whether or not, again, the business side of this makes sense, I don't know. We talked about this before a little bit. I don't want to re regurgitate points we've already made. But is this an embar- is do you think this is embarrassing to the Reds? Do you think that this is do you think that this is something that they actually care about or is this just whatever it, everybody's going to forget about it once opening day comes rolling around and people, only how many people actually care about watching spring training games? Usually never. Usually the answer is usually never except for this rare instance where the Reds are are quite literally what, a team good? full of youth. A, a team full of youth that you want to see the prospects. You want to see these young guys compete for a spot. Uh, and there will be competition this spring training. Like th- th- we don't know who's who's going to fill out the, the back end of our, our starting rotations. Though, will Brandon Williamson make the roster? There are guys we want to see pitch, and we can only see it ten games. Now it will be broadcasted on uh, all the ESPN, I believe, or, or some of I think some of the affiliates. I think I don't I don't know who exactly gets gets the Reds uh, on the radio. I know seven hundred gets a couple of them. And then, like, Fox Sports, 13... Radio should carry all. Okay. Like, I mean, obviously, based on that radio station schedule and everything, yeah. like, we'll start Monday. Our show will be preempted Monday, Tuesday for Red Spring Training right off the bat. Now, I know for us, we put higher priority on spring training games early because people have just been clamoring for baseball. Yeah. So, to hear Tommy and the Cowboy call baseball right off the bat, there's much more interest in getting those games on the air right away to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, as far as TV goes... I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sprinting to the TV to watch spring training baseball after the first week and a half. Like after it's kind of like the NFL when preseason gets here, I'll watch week one of the preseason just cause you've been clamoring and waiting yeah. for football. And then after that, I'm like, crap, we're another month away from week one. The, you know, so it's kind of how I am at spring training. I'll watch and listen to the early ones. And then after that, I'm just ready for opening day. But my, but my problem is what the hell else are they airing on Bally sports at one o'clock on a Tuesday? That they're like, oh yeah, these ratings are much better. These are That's much more excellent. Important. These are much more important. We're gonna watch that rerun of those two golf people play nine holes and talk. Don't about disrespect it. the hot chick. That, well, I don't yeah. know. No I don't doubt know. about it. Does let's call it name? what it is. They try like, to find the most beautiful woman in the world. That 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 is, uh, you know, let's call it. Yeah, that is what. I don't, and I don't know who they. Are. I don't know who the hell they are. Like, if I want to watch golf content, I'll go on YouTube. But it's just like I, I don't understand how in the age of technology, where you can stream quite literally anything. If you want your own podcast right now, you can go in your basement, set up a camera, and stream it to the world. In a world full of that, we can watch 10 games, 11. I think the real number is 11. I think there's, uh, there might be 12 or something like that. There might be a couple extra games thrown in there. But at max 12 spring training games for a, for a season that has maybe the most excitement we've had in 10 years, I think that's silly. I think that's absolutely preposterous, and I don't know who's in charge of that decision. I don't know if it's a rights issue, and maybe this is my ignorance for not knowing any of that information, but it's hard to believe that the Angels get 32 of these games televised. A, a town in which, and I say this with love and respect, but nobody cares about the Angels. They certainly don't care when Shohei leaves. So how are they getting 32 games, and the Reds are getting 10, 11, or 12? And, and, and I, I just don't get it, man. And, and you can stream anything. Put one camera out there. You don't have to make it fancy. Nobody's asking for the world. That's the I great watch, debate. I watch, I watch a Louisville Bats game. They got those cameras. Looks like they're shaking everywhere. Looks like it's a hurricane every single game. But I can at least watch it. I can stream it somewhere. Why is it not available? I mean, Bob should know. I mean, we're a broadcasting company. We can go out and do it out there. I mean, Bob, we're, we're having lunch with them right after this, right? We right. can just ask them. Bob, Bob, please. We can do it for you. We'll do it. Just give us some money, but we'll do it. He's already given us plenty. That's right. Well, he's given us enough. Yeah. <laughs> we could just go out there and do it a la carte. Has uh, he told you which no, one no, of you no. is his Pro favorite? Pro bono is the term I'm looking for. Are you for. his favorite? You? Who? Well, I think Trace is the favorite. <clears throat> yeah. I haven't met him yet, but I'm assuming I would be his favorite. He wears the merch. <laughs> yeah. I just think I, I just think it's wild, man. We, 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 we live in an age of technology, and somehow a team with the most excitement ever, can't you can't watch their games. That's the, that's the debate is like you have a professional organization that doesn't want to lend themselves to doing something that looks like it's half tailed, if we could say it like that. Um, so I, I understand the logic with the Reds or some of these other franchises where they don't want just some random one single camera somewhere. Then all of a sudden people are going to make fun about how the fact that they're a, a multi-million dollar franchise and they have most teams have billion dollar owners we don't but my point is is i don't see that's what i'm saying probably shouldn't say that when we're funded by them but my point is is we don't have maybe a billion dollar owner but most of these organizations do and they're going to make fun about how the fact that 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 
there's a ton of money inside these franchises, and yet they sit have a single camera out on a spring training game, and that's all you get. And the people will complain about that. So they just think they'd rather have nothing than something that's of lower scale. And I don't believe in that. I, I think that it, if you have the capabilities and the technology, which we do now, to be able to show something that people would care about, and it doesn't really cost you a whole lot of money, if anything at all, quite frankly, then by all means, you should do it. And I think that Major League Baseball specifically is going to enter, they're going to enter into a time now that is very, very critical in regards to what they do with media rights. Bally's is going under. We all know that. Uh, Diamond Sports Group, whatever you want to call it, they're going under. The Major League Baseball as a whole is going to have to figure out, do they want to try to tackle this beast that is production for their league as a whole? And I would say if they're going to put it on the individual team basis like they have in the past, that's fine. The Reds, 100%, without question. And I'm not saying it's us, but they should try to utilize some kind of production company that doesn't require a significant amount of resources to, to cover small odds and ends things. I'm talking about just things that they might consider dumb, but they, there's a fan base out there that wants to see it. Now, it might not be massive, but guess what? When you can put a paywall in front of it, it doesn't need to be massive to make it all make sense. You not think for a second that if they broadcasted all of these games on, we'll call it whatever, Reds Plus, and it was a single camera with some broadcasters, they, got, they can obviously, they're the ones that pay for the broadcast, so they can feed in they can feed in the Tommy, Tommy Thralls and the um, Cowboys of the world into the broadcast. So even though it's a single camera, you still get like the play-by-play. You add that into the paywall to where you get all spring training games, and then you get live batting practice for regular season games, and maybe you add in something else that's stupid. And there would be more than enough fans that would want to be able to have the access to that. And they wouldn't be asking for it to be this high-end, network station-looking broadcast. I agree. I mean, it's already been proven that that really people will, quite frankly, be willing to watch almost anything. If you've ever seen Baller TV, or if you've seen, if you've seen NF, NFHS, so am I saying that right? Regardless, from high school sports perspective, it's the world's worst broadcast Yet those companies have been in business for the last seven, eight, nine, ten years, and it's simply because, not because they're good at all at broadcasting anything, it's because if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't exist at all, and parents and people that care about stuff would rather see something than nothing at all. All right. Um, anything left to add on today's show? Yeah, we got to do chat power rankings, and then we got I got a couple cherry on tops, so then we'll get out of here. All right, let's do it. Chat power rankings. Is this is this your chat power rankings? Yeah, it is. And Reed texted me last night. He's like, oh, we got to do chat go. power rankings. It's not that I don't want to do chat power rankings. It's that every time I do it, people get upset that I leave somebody off. So mm. it's just like I can make this mm. list 400 people because I thank every single one of you for watching, but somebody's just going to get mad at me, and I hate doing it. I absolutely gotcha. hate doing it, but we're going to do it nonetheless. Honorable mentions today. Uh, number one, let's see if we got it. That's Randy. Randy's our guy. Uh, Randy was, was every time I look on Twitter, I check my notifications. It's usually a notification from Randy. This is my guy. Uh, <laughs> a lot of misspellings from Randy. A lot of misspellings, but that's okay. That's okay. Up next, honorable mention wise, we have AJ Worse. AJ Worse is my guy. I met him at the Bengals uh, or Paycor Stadium in the box in the suite. Uh, that was awesome. This is my guy, AJ. Always tunes into the show. Always. He's kind of like me, a little bit negative, a little bit of a negative fan, and I like that about him. Uh, here we go, top 10. Uh, number 10, we have Brian B. This is my guy, Brian. Nobody else in here likes Brian. It's just me. Brian, I always have your back. And, and no matter what Casey or Reed or Trace or anybody says, this is I have your back. I am your guy, Brian. Um, An OG. Number nine, Molly. Molly, unfortunately, she, she announced her big news this week, and we're very sorry to hear that, Molly. But Molly's going to bounce back on her feet, and she is going to be the best at whatever she's going to do next. So she's Molly, already got interviews. Huh? She's already got interviews. She's got interviews lined up. Molly, thank you very much for watching, and thank you for giving Casey the world's worst Christmas hat. That was very <laughs> special of you. Uh, number eight. What do we got? We got Ricky. Ricky lives under a water tower. He sends me a lot of funny Instagram DMs. He's the only, by the way, Chatterbox guy. Uh, Swaggy Play gets another shout-out. He sends me Instagram DMs every once in a while. But the only guy to use the Instagram medium to, to DM me stuff. He, he sends me a, a bunch of funny stuff. Shout-out Ricky, again, lives under a water tower. That's <laughs> pertinent information here. Uh, seven, 
We have Alex Wallace. Alex is our guy. He took the sweatshirt that I, want, I wanted up here uh, at Chatterbox. Trace and Sean gave it to him instead. But that's okay. We somehow forgot about it. We move on. But thank you very much, Alex, uh, for supporting our show always. I, get, I, I met him a couple times now. He came into the studio the other day. So Alex is our guy, number seven. Number six. What do we got? Colton. Colton is another guy who DMs me a lot. I love Colton. We are Bearcat brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, cheering on the UC Bearcats as bad as they always are. No matter what, we are there supporting. He is a Hamilton guy, and this is probably my favorite Hamiltonian. This might be my favorite Hamiltonian in Colton. So I've never met him yet, but I'm sure we're going to meet him very soon. Maybe at Chatterbox Reds if we're going to do that again this year. I don't know. Or the golf tournament or something. Colton, love you. All right, number five. We're getting to the top five now. Now, the top five today, I'm going to let you know, is pretty much all related to the, I'm not going to call it a war from this past week, but the Reds Twitter drama that occurred this week, uh, this is pretty much all based on that. Uh, number five, we have Evan. Evan is a bulldog. If anybody slanders anybody, is, anal is precious analytics, Evan will attack you like a bear. And it's just, it's just great to see. If you think Castellanos is better objectively than Will Benson, he's going he's gonna to debate you. He's going to say Will Benson's barrel percentage or Woba plus con or all these nonsensical stats that nobody else in the world cares about. He's got them in his back pocket, uh, and he's going to use them against you. He also likes the, the moon and the stars. He's a big astro astrology guy, I believe. Uh, I, I watched one of his streams once. Thank you, Evan. Number four. Who do we got? Number four. Uh, da, 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 Matt, no, who's this? Justin? Justin. Uh -oh. How could made, you forget? I might have made a mistake here. Yeah, it looks yeah, like you got Mouse like Cop's logo yeah. with Justin on All there. Right, well, then, so hold on. So here's what we're going to do. Justin and Mouse Cop. That's what we, that's what, so this is where everybody's going to start yelling at me uh, that you forget people. Justin and Mouse Cop. Both of them are great. Love you both. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, I'm sorry about Xavier Mouse Cop. They're really bad. Um, number three. Drew. Drew G made a very funny uh, video regarding being a, a co-conspirator with the Castellini family. It was very good. It was very interesting. Uh, Garrison? Huh? Is that Drew Garrison? That's Drew Garrison. That's what up, correct. Drew? Drew Garrison. And uh, so, yeah. So, so, again, he supported us. He supports us. Thank you very much, Drew. Number two, as always, in the top two is Mark Fetters. Mark Fetters, like a bulldog. I sent – Mark responded, I think it was, like, late at night, like, a, like a midnight. And it was right after that drama. And Mark started responding to some of those guys who I won't name now. And he's just like, have you guys ever heard of Chatterbox on YouTube? You should check them out. And it made me laugh my ass off. Mark, thank you very much. You're my guy. You know this. Uh, and I can't wait to see you. By the way, my favorite moment of all of 2023 was when we met Mark at a Reds game. And he had some weird-ass bird sound effect in his phone. <laughs> yes. and, it, and it went on for an inning and a half. And we're like... What the hell is that bird chirping? Where is that coming from? I'm like, anybody else have a ringtone or their phone on? Mark looks at me dead in the eyes. No, I don't have it. About an inning, about an inning later, I turn back to Mark. It's coming from you. He checks his phone. He's got some weird game where there's birds flying around. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. We love you. And the number one guy this week, and I know, by the way, shout out Everett. I, Everett didn't make the list just because I, 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 I shouldn't have to do these chat power rings. This should be a Reed thing. Reed's the one who has to get yelled at here, not me. Uh, but number one, it's Mr. Mo. Mr. Mo went to war for us this week. He was the number one soldier, front of the line on the battlefield. Mr. Mo, for that, you are this week's number one chatterbox power rankings. Uh, congratulations, buddy, and I love you. All right. Great job, Elliot. Uh, I got a couple of uh, cherry on tops. Yeah. Some cherry on tops. Can we start with the, uh, the, the hockey one before the space one? Unless you have – yeah. So this was a call last night from a hockey. This is a ref just keeping it real. This is this is sponsored by who? This is uh, sponsored by United Dairy Farmers, the best coffee ice cream place uh, combo in the country. So this is a some hockey game I didn't watch. The Islanders versus what is that? The Blues. If he yeah, hits it with his like, stick above oh, his got. head, you got you got to hear it. 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 You ready, Trace? I'm ready. I'm if going. he this hits it ref, with his it stick things. above his head. No, <laughs> oh, that's some good. Uh, You're not gonna like it. The, the call on the court us. stands. Uh, I think it's called ice, but go ahead. Call on the ice stands. Oh, thank you for your correction. That was really no important. problem. Uh, so that was very funny. I enjoyed that. I'm not a big hockey guy, but um, that was funny. And my final one. This is a, this is to actually shout out Evan a little bit, and it's to shout out the way we uh, classify things in this country. Uh, I believe I'm gonna try to get this the, the real quote on my computer so I can read it. But th th this is an asteroid that's apparently hurtling towards Earth, and 
you know, we have a lot of units of measurement here in this country, but this is how the latest in space Twitter account described it. Breaking news. A newly discovered asteroid the size of 16 washing machines will approach within 140,000 miles of Earth tomorrow. Dang. 16 of those things? You know, we got like yards, feet, uh, I don't know, like humpback whales. But he, out of all the things to compare a big rock to, it was 16 washing machines. And if you're not scared of that hurtling towards your ass, I don't know what you're going to be afraid of. So, again, when you might go to sleep tonight not even knowing a thing, but 140,000 miles away is 16, a 16 washing machine-sized ball right at us. Again, 140,000 miles away. But thank you very much for science, for putting it in things like terms we understand. Yeah, yeah. that's dumbing like, it down for machine. us. If peasants. they just put it in feet, I don't know if I would have been as scared as I am of 16 he's washing right. machines. No, he's 100%. And well, right. sometimes those washing machines are clunky now. You got a, you got a clunky ass <laughs> washing machine, clunk, 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 and those 16 clunk, clunk, turns clunk, into like 18 and a half. <laughs> so, I, I, again, this is thank you very much to the world of science. Uh, you got it again. Yeah. Cherry well, on top. I got it. I love that one. That one's that maybe the best cherry on top that you've had uh, since you've started here. Thanks. Uh, largely because I did not know about that. Now I, I have to worry all weekend whether or not I got something hurling towards me in my house that's the size of uh, 16 washing machines. Yeah, if you're confused. Which again, brand, though, I wonder, is the one yeah. that they were considering? No free ads, of course. No free but, ads. But, I, but when I go and I look at uh, the washing machines, they are different sizes usually about, you know, weight, height. You got the stackable kind. I don't know. Seems like a very vague yeah, thing that they decided loaders, to utilize, but that's here and we're there. Loaders. All right, so to recap today's show, um, we are indifferent on Joe Mixon. We think that uh, there's a lot of kids that are getting $600, and they probably don't deserve that, so stop saying that they're not getting what they deserve. That's ridiculous. Uh, we had our big news. We plan to, on March 25th, to be clear, from 3 to 5, there will be new programming on this channel okay nothing changes outside of that though here unless you live in the Dayton area then you can hear us on the local radio station from noon to three right before Kenner and Kev from three to six on our channels from three to five we will have Kenner and Kev on this program so if you've never heard them before and you and you don't you don't have the ability I'm sure that they can get it on the internet but if you don't have the ability to tune into the radio dial, 1410 Wing AM in Dayton, then you can find them right here on this lovely thing that we call the internet, and YouTube more specifically, on Chatterbox Sports. Mark, I think Mark's being mean when he keeps asking this question. But yes, we are still on YouTube. We are still doing the show from 10 to 12. We will also be on from 12 to 3 if you live in Dayton or the surrounding areas. I don't yes. know how far the radio stretches. Um, uh, almost to here. How many washing machines would you say does your radio station extend out to into the world? It's more like houses. Houses? Maybe like Maybe I think we reach five houses in okay. Kettering. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Five houses. You know, That's roughly powerful 25 AM washing machines. Reach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, we do have Chatterbox Reds. We are going live in the ninth inning of the spring training game tomorrow. We will not be doing that for every game. Okay, we're not that crazy. We're not that stupid. We're not doing it for every spring training game, but we will be doing it for tomorrow. Uh, we do have the spring training trip coming up. In regards to what that looks like for this show, we're still figuring it out. We don't know what's coming, what's going half the time at this place, and that's okay. That's probably why many of you like this place is because you never know what you're going to get. But I hope you have a lovely weekend. Box lunch is still a thing. Okay, it's still a thing. It's coming up for those that are members right now. But for the rest of you, enjoy your weekend. We'll see you back here better than ever on Monday morning. Take care, everybody.